Hello! Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Fabled Narrative, and let's get into this. From CBS All Access, Star Trek Universe Panels, SDCC 2020, Comic Con at Home. And, uh, <laughs> oh, they activated the likes and comments. Okay. They didn't do it in the first one hour. That's interesting. Okay. But Gary from Nerdrotic, uh, Gary from Nerdrotic, and Az from Heels Babyface uh, YouTube channel, they did a reaction video for the first 20, 30 minutes of the of the video. And what really got under their nerves as to why they could not finish, while Gary will do an overarching uh, in-depth video about it, we're going to be doing a full-fledged from start to finish reaction. We're going to go through every single thing that they said and everything that they've chosen to keep into the video because this is incredibly edited. You can see some of the jump cuts and some of the conversations between certain moments. You get to see, like, well, why did that person not stop talking? Well, they cut it out. It's just clunky editing in and of itself. And I want to thank very much, Gary, for bringing this to my, to my worldview, to my, to my awareness, because Star Trek is an incredibly woke thing. For anybody out there who has been following it, I'm, I'm not necessarily a fan of Star Trek. I never have been, but I've always respected it because it kind of went in tandem with Star Wars. Those two things of like, you know what, we have different fandoms, we have different universes that we love, that we respect, that we cherish. The characters are incredibly different, the universe is incredibly different, how they approach certain things are incredibly different, if not polar opposites. There's a few episodes incredibly uh, with, uh, what, what is it called, Deep Space Nine. There's one episode where one of the main characters is glimpsed, uh, I, I won't spoil much, I won't spoil the ending, but he has glimpses of his future death in like two hours and he throughout the entire i think one hour episode he keeps going into the future of seeing what would kill him and what would kill him and the ending of that kind of peeved me off not because it was a bad show but because of like he did something so heroic but nobody recognized his amazingness it was like come on guys so again star trek has many wonderful characteristics about it but that's old Trek. That is Star Trek. That's not the Star Trek Kurtzman. That's not the Discovery. That's not Picard. That's not what we're going to be coming out with. Um, there's two more. There's uh, there was two more that were going to be coming out. Uh, the Lower Decks. That's a TV series. And the next one they actually are announcing in this video, which I, I don't care about. It's like, ugh, okay. But let's get right into it, because I went on long enough. Let's watch the entire video. I'm going to be pausing it quite often, because CBS has a very... Tr is there... I've, I've, had, I've had conversations with actual other YouTubers who have had issues uploading CBS content because of their copyright overreach. Let's just put, That's the word I'm looking for. Their overreach of the copyright material. So I'm going to be pausing it every 5-10 seconds. Hopefully that'll be enough for it not to be taken down because that would be a whole hell of an, of an argument if, 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 I, if I do 10 seconds and they get rid of the entire video. If it's like 2, 3, or 4 hours long or something. That, oh, I would so blow a hissy fit. I'd probably go out for a walk and then a run and then sprint and like punch the wall and be like <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dominic Patton, Senior Editor and Chief TV Critic for Deadline Hollywood, and I'm so glad to cool. be back at Comic-Con this year, especially at Comic-Con at Home. Yeah. Oh, wait, I have that. No, I don't have that exact same. Okay. So welcome to our Star Trek universe. I think my sister has that star or something like that um, hanging on her wall somewhere in her home. First panel at this year's San Diego Comic-Con at Home. Now, I'm joined here today by Alex Kurtzman. I don't think that's a good thing, but okay. And Heather Caden, who serve as executive producers of the three series that we'll be featuring in today's... The three series? Oh, no, no, the three series of, I think, Discovery, Picard, and then the Lower Decks. I think those are the three series, and they're also going to be announcing the fourth series as well. Star Trek Universe panel. Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Lower Decks, Star Trek Picard. Called it! Hi, Heather and Alex. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Yes. Now, one of the things that we've seen in the past several years is the Star Trek universe is always expanding. Yeah. There's an issue there. Expansion doesn't mean change is that the change that you're making is good, because you can expand a universe. As for an example, I I love a very I love if oh, is that a family thing? 
Nope. I can get back to that later. Um, I am a fan of Kung Fu Panda and Kung Fu Panda 2. I would argue that Kung Fu Panda 2, after seeing Kung Fu Panda 1, is a phenomenal, if not one of the top ten really adult-themed films it, made in a children's cartoon, made in a children's or a family film. It was, it's phenomenal. <laughs> Shrek 2 is, the, is, is probably even a greater example. Kung Fu Panda 2 is one of my personal favorites, but Shrek 2 is hard to deny how amazing it is built. But then Shrek 3 came out. Ain't bad, but not going to watch it again. <laughs> uh, Shrek 4, Shrek 5. It's like, come on, guys. Y'all are just milking it right now. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the series. I kind of stopped watching after Shrek 2. And that's kind of the point is you can keep expanding it, but expansion is not the good part. Expansion is, hey, there's a good story to tell. Let's tell that story. It might take about 5, 10, 20 years to tell it again, but I'd rather, I'd rather wait 20 years and hear and watch a phenomenal film. For ex another example, uh, Samurai Jack. I grew up with that. I think I was 10, 11, 12. I don't know when it first came out. But I grew up with that. I was probably 16 when it first came out. I was younger. And when it when it first came out, I liked it. And then I kept watching it. And then I rewatched it. And I rewatched it. I don't know. It's just it wasn't the best, but I couldn't not watch it. It was just amazing. And then 10 years later, or 12 years later, they came out with the sixth season. The fifth, sin is the fifth season, f season finale, absolute cliffhanger. It was dumb. It was a horrible way to end it off. But the sixth season that they came out with, I kind of have a little bit of a disagreement uh, or gripe of what they should have, could have done, but they didn't ruin the characters. They developed the characters for what was not just unique. It's hard to describe it, really is. How do, how do I describe it? They, they, they did Jack right. It's the best thing that I could ever say is that I'm, I will wait 10 years to watch good film. Expanding something is not a good thing. Well, let me say that. It's not inherently a good thing, but it is natural, which is something that we... Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about what's ahead? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Well, <laughs> ahead, his head's bald. <laughs> Woo! First of all, Dom, thank you so much for having us, and we're we're very sad not to be at, at Hall H this year uh, with our Star Trek family. Oh, he's so he's so quiet right now. San Diego, but we're really excited that people still get to hear uh, all about it. Yeah, you see that that, that editing that wasn't a natural conversation that just. Uh, it's so it's so edited. Let me ask you this now sure. in the past couple of months We have of course heard if you want to be on YouTube It's one of the things of like be comic con at home Something that with on YouTube you'd be I think have a lot more lenience if it was just more natural with anybody saying whatever they wanted But they also have to keep things under wraps, but again, it's more if you're on YouTube That's kind of an issue if you're gonna do a long-form panel with 27 ish plus people you got to have a bit more natural I don't know. The great news about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Iconic characters Strange coming New back Worlds. with their own series. Give us a sense of where that's at. All right, so... Uh, Again, it, just, it, just, it just cuts over to the Kurtzman. We heard the fans. Uh, I really wanted to tell everybody about it last Comic-Con. Um, people were poking around and asking questions, and we couldn't say anything. <sighs> yeah, pausing it for copyright. But we were already we were already having real active conversations at that point. Okay, I'm getting exciting. bored with this guy. Um, we're just gonna keep yeah, skipping until so he now, says Heather, something. As we talk about live action Star Trek, and there are, of course are several series, and we're gonna see many of them today. There's also animated Star Trek coming. Heather, can you give us a sense of what we're gonna see in that version of this world? Pausing. Yeah. So in addition to Lower Decks, which we'll talk about a little later, we're you are developing oh show oh a kid's kid show on nickelodeon, nickelodeon with talented uh, and that the talented hagenman brothers are wait what kid show you're talking about show running i just i just want to make certain if you're going to be developing oh, okay now i okay things are going to be coming together because they they kurtzman does view his uh star trek as his platform to not brainwash but to make act but to you but to do activism politically and that's one big issue that I have with anything. I hate the LGBTQ plus group because of this, because it is inherently a political group. 
because any and all progress, boom, right there, that's word. If you ever hear with LGBTQ and progress, well, what are you progressing? Well, equal rights for all. Equal rights or special rights? I mean, if it's special rights, then you have to make specific laws about certain people. Well, how about if you are an individual or just a citizen of the country? Boom, right there. Regardless of your race, creed, color, nationality, or sex, as long as you are at least American, you have the exact same laws, you, are, you have the exact same rights under the law. You are to be treated, and if you aren't treated, you are not being treated to the standard that is required. So that's, again, that's how I approach it. So if you're a political party that's saying, hey, uh, we just want equal rights. Okay, I don't care about your insert whatever character physical uh, immutable characteristic that just doesn't play a role with whatever you think, feel, speak, or act or behave. Because being gay and being straight has nothing to do with whether or not do you want more taxes. Like, hey, like if you value certain things of like, hey, well, I think that there should be more LGBTQ programs. Okay, should there be more straight programs? Like, that's just the exact same. <laughs> like, so weird. It's so cringe to hear people say, like, I want LGBTQ. To me, that's saying you want more straight programs. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> well, we want things to be fair. No, it sounds like you want special treatment. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but let's stop the murdering. Let's stop the pillaging and plundering. Let's stop stealing things from everybody. And then we're, whoever has whatever, keep it. But you're not going to do it anymore. But we have less. 20 years later, you want to go back to the other person, start pillaging and plundering because you didn't, you got a raw deal 20 years ago. It's like, okay, now stop. And then the other people who got robbed, who had nothing to do with it, who weren't there 20 years ago, are now have been robbed 20 years in the future. They're going to be like, well, we got a raw deal 20 years ago. And they'll look at you and like, because of your insert immutable characteristic, therefore, insert judgment. And like, well, wait a second. If we're going to, like, just stop it. Stop your shit. <laughs> stop your shitty activities, your shitty beliefs. And just here, okay, we'll start now. Now, start it. And if you do it, you're in the wrong. Because <laughs> I didn't do anything in the past, but if I'm being treated because of the things that have happened in the past and I'm only associated because of my immutable characteristics, go fuck yourself. That we're super excited about for kids to have a way into the Star Trek brand. Okay, kids don't need a way into the Star Trek brand. Star Trek and its very nature is very low key. That if, like, you can get a five, ten, seven, ten year old to start watching the original Star Trek. You can. You really can, <laughs> and if anything, do it with El do it with Elmo or Sesame Street, which is somewhat woke. They actually came out with Elmo saying like how amazing Black Lives Matter is and how the protests, including the riots, were a necessary part of society. Like yo, they did they're just they're just doing what they need to do. Oh my gosh! And, and we're officially announcing today that the title of that show will be Star Trek Prodigy. Prodigy. That <laughs> sounds like a porn. <laughs> Star Trek por pornogy. <laughs> Definitely not a kid's show. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What was that? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> you go boom right there. You go poo. What was it? Poo. <laughs> now, oh, man. About that. Oh man, not really shitting on their tr they're trying to reach out to kids, but their activism is what I really am railing ag railing against here. <laughs> is that hey, well, just for an example, how many people in the cast will vote for Trump? I'm not saying that I do. I'm just saying how many? Because if it's all, let's just say one leaning political party, is that an issue? Is that a problem? Is that a question? Would that same activity, if there was a bunch of conservatives who created a bunch of things, who had one out of a hundred who would vote for, let's just say, Joe Biden, would that not be put into question? Can we not put that into question? I just, just asking the question here. <laughs> uh, Alex, talking about today, what are we going to see today with the with Star Trek Universe panel that we have at Comic-Con at home? You know what? I have to give him props because he is a pretty good host. Uh, I don't think there's anything about him, him himself other than being in the bubble. Uh, the, the other than his big bald head, <laughs> but uh, I don't really have any issues about that guy. You are going to see um, 
on the Discovery side, a live reading of the finale of season two. Okay. No problem there. Have not watched it. Uh, you are then going to have a brief Q&A. Okay, with this Sarah. guy's kind of boring. You're going to have a Q&A with Mike McMahon and Lower Deck. So you're going to get to meet. Good. So you see, guys, Good. we're delivering a full Star Trek package. I want to go back to what we were just talking about again. Obviously, the okay. coronavirus is keeping us apart from each other this year. Uh, the virus There's is keeping us apart. There's a lot going on in this country and around the world. Right. Sometimes I feel like art can speak to some of those issues, perhaps even more than politics can, specifically when we talk about Star Trek. He brought up politics, inclusion, diversity, outreach. <laughs> oh, again, how in how inclusive is verse uh, how inclusive if you were to compare something of I don't care about your fucking skin color versus another person who says what is your skin color? Well, what does that have anything to do with what I think, feel, or speak or act as? Because if I think, feel, speak, or act as one person, are you going to judge me differently if I'm a different person? If I say, hey, you should probably get your shit together. Okay, well, what if a woman said that? Hey, you should probably get your shit together. Well, listen to, hey, you should probably get your shit together. It's like, wow, okay, that's a pretty good message. <laughs> Regardless of who said it. <laughs> like, again, inclusion, diversity, outreach, go fuck yourself. All those words are... All those words make you feel happy. All those words are things that if you attack it, it's like, oh my gosh, they're just precious puppies or something. You don't attack it. You don't challenge it. It's just, why would you be against inclusion, diversity, or outreach? I don't care about your fucking skin color. I don't care about your sex. I don't care about your gender. How you think or feel yourself to be? I'd ra I have more in common with an atheistic trans person. or uh, I was going to need a little bit more religious or... Uh, no, no, spiritual. That was, that was the specific word I was going to go for. But let's do something a little bit more basic. I have more in common with a trans woman who knows themselves to be biologically male, who, who, who feels like they are specifically a woman, than a man who thinks that if you want to identify as a woman, that makes you biologically a woman. I have more in common just from that not because of your identity, but because of how you think, but because of what you believe to be true. I can have a disagreement with, uh, with the, if I can have a disagreement with a trans woman and be like, well, I agree with this, I disagree with that, but I, I don't care. Like at the end of the day, I don't care. You, le you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone, you get to do whatever you want, I get to do whatever I want. We wipe our hands clean and walk away. Or we'll just join hands and go together because we love Star Trek or Star Wars or certain episodes or even going to certain fandoms. It's like, well, oh, you like Kung Fu Panda 1? Well, I like Kung Fu Panda 2. Kung Fu Panda 2 is stupid. Wait, let's see the end. Kung Fu Panda 2 is stupid. Whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 what? You're wrong! And we can have a disagreement and argue and be like, oh, you're so stupid for thinking that. Is it because I'm a trans woman? It is now! <laughs> it's like, again, inclusion, diversity, and outreach are all bullshit words. If you don't care, like, I, I don't care. Star Trek, inclusion, diversity, outreach. I wanted to know what you guys think about the message of Star Trek in the American... Ah, uh, there we go. The message of Star Trek. What about the message of Star Wars? Uh, the message of Star Wars should be the story of Star Wars, like whatever is in that world. The story of John Wick, I hated John Wick 3. Uh, there were some good things in it, but I, I, I just don't like it. Um, they, they played on too... It, it went too long in some places... I just don't like start. I don't like John Wick three. I love John Wick two. I think John Wick two was an A plus. I th I'd give uh, John Wick one maybe a B plus, not a B minus, but a B plus at least, and then a A minus at most. So it's like it's not perfect. It's not great, but it's fucking solid. It is just solid all the way through. <laughs> it doesn't have any hiccups from what I from what I've seen. Maybe one one or two spots with the guy who got killed in it. Uh, the guy who saved John Wick a few times. But, spoiler warning. <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> uh, but, the message of a show should be whatever story you're telling in that show. John Wick 2 was about John Wick trying to um, get revenge. It was a revenge story. John Wick 1 was a revenge story. John Wick 2 was a different revenge story, but it was very thematic with based off... Yeah, the first one, the story, the, the 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 universe that was created, it didn't have anything to do with social norms. 
it was just whatever was in the in the show it was ever in the movie but if you're thinking that well star trek is supposed to represent certain things yeah what is in the movie what is in the show is the is what's being shown good i hated john wick 3 i i was looking forward to it i was so happy and anticipating it i watched the trailer like four or five ten twenty times but then i watched it i was just like eh. same with star trek it's like is star trek good that's the whole point that's the whole message that matters america and in the world that we're living in today I think we're all so proud I'm to so, be so, working on so a show stunning, that so proud. has a message that really matters. The message that matters should be what resonates in the show. Again, John Wick, I don't want to be John Wick. John Wick is a murderer. He kills people. But I can identify with him because he goes through some challenges. That's not too hard to grasp. Apparently, for the Star Trek people, producers, it's like, well, ah, Kung Fu Panda 2. Mm-hmm. I hate Kung Fu Panda 3 with a passion because I because they set something up in Kung Fu Panda 2 where Tigress was being questioned by uh, Poe, the panda main character, about how she got so strong and powerful and she just punched the ironwood trees outside the palace for 20 years. That's the reason she got strong. That's the reason she, she's so legitimately from what they said verbatim hardcore. Hardcore. But they didn't do anything with that. That sucked. I wanted more of that. What I would have loved to see, and something I guess in my anticipation of what I was expecting, was I would have loved to see Kung Fu Panda 3, maybe even bring in the family... I'm doing a lot of spoilers here, but it's been out for a while, so it's... <laughs> folly, on who, folly on me, anyways. Where in Kung Fu Panda 3, they, they bring in the family of Poe. But it's not just about Poe. Have it with Tigress her her family or where she came from they uh, maybe from the the, uh, the the mother or father or whoever gave her up as the or as an orphan we get to see why they did or maybe she's these she has the spirit of the dragon within her the dragon warrior well the reason that she probably felt like she she needed it or something maybe maybe something like that maybe you, they actually confront a real dragon and the dragon is not necessarily maybe there's a good and a bad dragon you can see them like red and blue black and white and maybe there's but they they're always in contrasting colors through the entire show but you never get to understand like who's the good guy who's the bad guy until, or maybe, maybe, I don't know, it's just like you could do something more with Tigress, but she got sidelined. They set it up, gone. It's just, yeah. So what resonates is what's within the characters. I don't care if it resonates within the real world. If you think that you need to go into the fake world to live the real world, got a problem, buddy. You got a problem. You need to wake up. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't do that. I, I, I dive into a game and not even look up at the clock until about 3, 4, 5, 20, 10 hours. Well, legitimately about 4 hours later. And be like, oh, I got to eat something. Or, I got to poop. <laughs> like, oh, I, didn't, I forgot I, I was in my body. Oh, okay. This this thing needs to be man ma maintenance, uh, managed every once in a while. And really resonates. I think... Anyone who does what they do on this side of the camera, on the other side of the camera, is hoping to say something. And I think what's great when you're working on genre is you often get to say things. She's not saying anything. About current events and mask them so they don't feel like medicine or that you're being taught something. But the objective of what you're doing is trying to teach something. That's that's where I'm here. That's that's what I'm listening. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> and I think in the case of Star Trek, thematically, it's just been baked into what Star Trek is about a better hope, about equality. Ah, uh, wasn't Star Trek always about equality and gender equality? And well, wait, if okay, if you want equality, gender equality does not need to be stated. Okay, just saying that. It's either it's about equality, every and, and more importantly, it's not about e equality, because we're not all equal. There's people in the shows of Star Trek who are good, who are bad, who are smart, who are dumb, who are wise, who are retarded. These things matter, but it's not about your. A, a woman walks in onto the uh, Starfleet command. Okay, what rank is she? 
why should she why should why should she be talking about it? It's not oh why should she be talking about the emphasis of her sex or gender sits her sex, but why is she speaking? Is it because she has something to say? Is it because she because uh, the, the the commander is wrong? And if the commander is wrong, you shouldn't be doing it on the, uh, the the deck unless there is an important thing. Um, like you're in the midst of battle, if you're in the midst of battle, you shouldn't be going against your commander anyways. That's what matters. The equality part is not focusing on the fucking sex. Oh well, gender equality. They did that. They they they. It's done. Gender equality has already been dealt with. So again, making it about sex, you making it about sex, gender equality. You you focus so much more on the gender aspect rather than the equality aspect. That's just how I see it. The gender equality, racial equality, sexual equality. Again, all equalities. There's no reason to say those things because you mentioned equality. I mean, it's it's what it is. And you know, we've seen in the past few weeks that you guys that we've seen on the Star I've Trek. Seen this guy from somewhere. I don't remember. Hashtag Star Trek United. Alex, can you why Star Trek United? Why not Star Trek Universe? <laughs> like Star Trek Universe. Star Trek. Uh, okay. Can you give us a sense about what that is telling us. Oh, I so re okay. I remember in uh, one of the panels, uh, one of the discussions with uh, like the nine people there or twelve people that were on the, uh, the screen. One of them was saying like, "Oh, we need to make this hashtag go viral. Make it go viral." And it's like, st Twitter is a cesspool. Don't don't do Twitter. If you're out there who do who does Twitter, I I'm sorry. I did Twitter at one point, but then I couldn't. I was having an argument with somebody, and only until. Actually, it was like maybe two people, two or three people. But I was having an argument with somebody, and the only moment in which they were starting to listen to me in my argument was when I said I was gay. They, they called me homophobic, and I said I was gay. And from then, they said that they were sorry. They let me talk because we were going at it. Like, we were going at that argument. We were posting, 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 posting. And the moment that he called me homophobic, I dropped the, oh, I'm gay. It's like... Okay, because that's, that, that's the way you communicate with SJWs. Here's my identity, now I'm allowed to speak. So that's why I think that SJW is a legitimate virus, it makes people weak, it, it breaks people down, it spreads, infects, and multiplies. So if, if you know SJWs, please pray for them, please think of them, please hope and hope for the best for them. But the ideology is what's a virus. They are not a virus. They are the result of the virus. The virus is the ideology because if you change that ideology, you change the person because it's not who you are. You're, it's not who you think. It's not your physical characteristics or what you think about those things. It, it's, it's not your physical characteristics. It's what you think about that thing. It's the inside that matters. Oh, man, I thought we already dealt with this like 30, 40, 50 years ago, but apparently who, who, people who are bringing it up are <gasps> people on the extreme left and people who are normalizing it on the slightly left who are just accepting of like, well, don't bother them because they're just a small portion or I don't think of it's that bad, but they don't really know what the topic is all about. It's like, why are you against equal? Like, why are you against sexual e equality? It's like, I'm not. I just think that if you're going to say equality, that goes across the boards that what's matter is your merit. <laughs> it's like <gasps> merit is is evil and racist and cis-normative. Star Trek, really, since its inception, has always um, its endeavored to speak to the vision that... Uh, Gosh, what? Well, Alex Kurtzman is so day. boring to listen to. <laughs> Star Trek United is the effort of bringing awareness to many of the... Organ I'm just going to read whatever he says because what he has to... How he says things is just boring. <laughs> to many of the organizations that are now... Cr that are crit Oh, wait, wait, wait is uh, the effort of bringing awareness to many of the organizations that are critical right now, Black Lives Matter, the NAACP. Oh my gosh, okay. Those are political activist groups. They, they really are. If you, if, you, if, you are being, if you are called a Nazi enough, the NAACP will come after you and label you as such because, oh, everybody's calling you, therefore you are. Black Lives Matter. Well, what about, I, I don't care for this, but I'm just using the argument. Why not White Lives Matter? That's not what Black Lives Matter is about. Okay, well, let's use the exact same example, but in reverse. Make America great again. <gasps> America was never great. Oh, what? <laughs> you mean when we signed the independence that, you, again, and then throughout the years, we, we, we allow... Uh, you have a standard of equality under the Bill of Rights that was created by 
men, by, by a lot of white men to create equal rights under the law. And then we've kept expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding that. And a lot of people agree, a, a lot of people just accepted that you have a different political system than I. Well, cool, it doesn't matter. We'll go out for a beer, we'll vote for however we vote, but at the end of the day, we're still Americans. People don't believe that on the left. We're not Americans because America is inherently racist. And if I believe that I'm, I, I love America, a racist. So again, make America great again, the activities of what that means, versus, well, America was never great again. Well, you're, you're using the, just the term, the words, rather than actually understanding the meaning, which is the exact same activity of somebody saying, hey, white lives matter, it's not about white lives. Okay, make America great again. America was never great. It's the exact same activity. It really is. CP, uh, a lot of our cast speaking to that. Star Trek speaking to it. Again, a lot of a lot of people are just extreme lefts, and I think they're just in an echo chamber. If you if you don't know if you don't know where your poop goes, if you don't know who handles your poop or how your poop is handled after you flush it down the drain, you are wealthy compared to the rest of the planet. You are rich beyond measure compared to everybody else who has ever lived. So again, it's like, oh my gosh, my life is not good. I'm struggling with money. Oh my gosh, I have money? Well, there's a lot of people in the world who would love to have this money. Boom, shift the change, shift the thought, shift your focus, bam, that's how it works. It's like, it doesn't get rid of the problem, but it helps you deal with the problem in a different light, hopefully a better one. Um. The goal is not really to... The vote. goal is not Star Trek. Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? To that, Star oh, Trek let's watch that again. The goal is not really to promote Star Trek. Oh, look at his face. It's such a retarded face. I'm going to punch... That's a punchable face. I'd take off the glasses and then punch him in the eye. And then punch him in the other eye. Put the glasses are on him and then punch his face. The goal is not Star Trek? <laughs> like, what? Um... The goal is not really to promote Star Trek, but to promote these organizations. It is, it is, again, Star Trek is about promoting political ideologies, pro promoting certain political belief systems, because, uh, again, I disagree with Black Lives Matter. Oh, <gasps> you hate black people. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, you mean the rioting that's happened because George, George Floyd, who died in a very ho horrible way. I, there's no other way of saying that. He died in a very ill-mannered way saying it even the lightest you possibly can. What are people writing about? Look, a band, like, let's, let's not just, de let's not just um, have uh, change within the police or systematic sh change or a reforming, but instead let's get rid of or defund the police. Oh, well, okay, defunding the police doesn't change that. It just removes, it removes the problem for an even worse problem. So, again, if you're not, if you don't want the police, don't police the law. So if I go around, if you, if, if, again, if the police were um, defunded, if the police were cast out and saying, no more police, we ban the police like they did in Minneapolis. If I go outside and I break the law, you can't stop me because that would be enforcing with a police system and structure. Well, no, no, my police system, me policing it is okay, but those guys are naughty pants. Okie dokie. <laughs> Fucking retards. Organizations and to use our platform to be able to Our platform. It our platform to promote political ideologies. Or political movements. We are an activist. We are activism in a nutshell. I could probably stop it right here. The entire video is premised on this. So you know what? I'm gonna pause it, make this into a sole video for 33 minutes, and then we'll continue watching the entire thing. So <laughs> Oh my gosh, I might even just make a shorter video of doing that. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, I'm back. I had to make that little clip. Dude, apparently it was like a 19 minute rant and oh man, if I, did, if I can get on a topic, I can get on a topic. <laughs> Once I get on a topic, then I can get on a topic. Let me, oh, I didn't even do my water. Let me do that real quick. Got some water, I'm happy. Since we use our platform to be able to bring greater awareness to these very, very important uh, messages and places. Yes, a political association, not even, it's political activism. And that's a, that's a very big issue. That's a very big issue for me. Well, that's a very worthy use of- Very worth the, oh shit. I gave this guy, like, lev I gave this guy the benefit of the doubt. And I thought that he was a pretty good guy, a pretty good host. 
Well, that's a very worthy use of a very powerful platform to politically be active and share everybody my political affiliations and associations, which may be incredibly divisive for the fans. <gasps> but you know what? If you disagree, you, you really don't care about those things. It's like... Uh... You're a very powerful platform. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Alex. Fuck you, Heather. Fuck you, Alex. And enjoy y'all's fucking day. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Um, thanks so much. Thanks. Bye. Now. Look at that editing. Actually, that editing was pretty sweet. I am excited to introduce the first portion of the Star Trek Universe panel featuring the season two cast of CBS All Access's Star Trek Discovery, who all came together for a special virtual table read. This guy looks like a penis. I am just... All bald people look like penises. Confirmed! <laughs> of the first act of the epic season two finale, Such Sweet Sorrow Part Two. So be sure to stick around after this virtual reading because the- Why? I don't want to do this, but you're forcing me to do so. The cast are gonna do a Q&A. And now, without further ado, here is the Star Trek Discovery executive producer and co-showrunner, Michelle Paradise, to kick things off. Uh... Uh, Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ma Oh, okay, I apologize for any audio, because that kind of was a little bit loud for me, so I apologize for anybody out there. Michelle Paradise, I am the co-showrunner and one of the executive producers of Star Trek Discovery, and thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I, in honest, I've never seen the actual show, Star Trek Discovery. I heard that it's not the original Star Trek. That kind of sucks, it, it actually retcons, it's its own different universe, which I hate. I mean, Batman, there's so many versions of Batman, it kind of gets tiresome. There's actually better versions of Batman I prefer. And I guess that's kind of like one great thing, but they've said it so many times, there's no continuity to his character that it's hard to stay true with who Batman is, and that's a big issue for me. It's like stay true with who the character is. With Batman, they've done it. Uh, Green Lantern? Eh. With Superman? Most of them they have, but... It's just the... I, I want some continuity here. Okay, as we do a virtual table read of Act 1 of our Season 2 finale, Such Sweet Sorrow Part 2. Yeah. Because it was a two-part finale. It was that... It was that epic. I've never heard of a two-part finale ever in a TV show. It's so epic. <laughs> epic. But we had to do it in two parts. Um, oh, and you know what? She actually does look better having that ponytail, but without it, she looks so weird. We are so excited that we could come together and do this for Comic-Con since we can't be in there in person. We're very bummed about that, but we are all safely social distancing. Hope you are as well. No, fuck you. I'm licking people. <laughs> and uh, we're just excited that we could be here and that we could do this. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are also here to support a very important call. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, okay. Okay. What 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 special cause? Because if you're going to say something political, cause. And for that, I will turn it over to Michael Burnham herself, star of our show. Oh, I think you're going to be announcing Prodigy. That or no, or the third season of Discovery. I don't know. It better be those things. If if you're going to be doing some political bullshit, fuck you. Awesome human being, Sonequa Martin Green. Please tell us uh, the the action. She's a very weird face. Like it looks fake important reason that we're here today. Yes. Well, that extra important reason is that we're here together today uh, to support an organization. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Really? Oh, I was so wanting it to be some bullshit Star Trek Discovery announcement. But no, we have to be politically active in AACP legal defense for, let me guess, Black Lives Matter? Known as the NAACP Legal Defense <laughs> and Education edu Fund. Okay, let's read this. Support the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. <laughs> let me actually look up the NAACP. Educational Fund. Let me tell you how ignorant I am politically on some things. I didn't know what the NAACP stood for. Usually when it's an acronym, I just roll with it. For an example, I was in the military and there's a lot, an ATV. Never understood why they called that, what they called it as. I never cared. It was okay, that's an ATV. I don't have to question anymore. It's above my pay grade. The NAACP, the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, 
where's the advancement of the advancement of non-colored people? Oh fuck! It's like it's a racist organization. Yeah. It's like, it's everyone but white people. Go fuck yourself, NAACP, for excluding me from any and all good activities you could be doing to be helping me. But because of my different skin color, I, I can't, will you, uh, will you help me in a specific ende endeavor? Oh, I'm not colored? I can't use that? Well, let's reverse it. Oh, I can't use that organization because I'm colored? Oh, that would sound horrible, but because I'm white. <laughs> What does white even mean? <laughs> Go fuck yourself, NAACP. Go fuck yourself. Is America's premier legal organization fighting for racial justice? Racial justice? Okay, justice or special feature? Special justice? Like it, it sounds like special justice because if you have to include like okay skin color, there's no need to add any specific skin color. Just say skin color or ethnicity. You don't have to add any specific ethnicity. Just say ethnicity. It covers all of it. It's like equality. You just say equality. You don't have to say any other type of equality like sexual equality, racial equality, gender equality, whatever other equality, religious equality. Well, rel religions aren't the same, by the way. <laughs> and, um, if you're really like, it's just, uh, you're Fucking poison, Star Trek. You you are now poison. Fuck you. It is the country's first and foremost civil and human. Wait, where is the white representation? <laughs> I'm being excluded. <laughs> and, oh, and if anybody out there is actually cheering that, oh, you are being excluded. Oh, poor you. Well, I guess it being if anything bad happens to a white person, that's kind of the sentiment. It's like, oh my gosh, as a white person, you've never had to deal with this. As a white person. Why not just call like my my like me as my name? Me as an individual. Have I ever experienced segregation? Yeah, actually, it's <laughs> yes I have. Very difficult to be in the military. They vet you based off a specific system, but it's much easier, or at least it was when I was in the military. They didn't combine the two a uh, ATP scores, uh, the physical the physical training course um, score where women actually had a very a much easier time to get a higher score which means that they could be promoted quicker than a man that that was horrible but because i'm a man therefore shut up well that's fucking bullshit and racist sexist bigoted etc law firm it was actually founded in 1940 by thurgood Marshall. i don't care you know i'm gonna talk over you from your subsequently fucking became a, any and all people who are fighting for equality, not rate, not just racial equality, but equality, I'm for that. Go for it. Fantastic. I am happy about that. But Star Trek is using that to push political ideologies and be politically active. Which, again, you as an individual actor or actress, go for it. But when you start saying it publicly, I don't have to promote you. I don't have to support you. And if you're going to be, it's like, oh, hey, look at all this progress. If you go, if you go against Black Lives Matter, you hate progress. If you go against the LGBTQ, you hate progress. It's like, well, I think it's regressive, not progressive. <gasps> oh my gosh, criticism. The first African American U.S. Supreme Court justice. Um, the again, it's not the criticism of who they're putting out. It's Star Trek. I have the issue with the thing is that they're actually masking themselves of like, look at all the good that we're doing. No, they've done good. They've done good for equality in the past. Fuck Star Trek. The LDF's mission is to achieve racial justice, equality, and- Oh my gosh, this is just gonna go on. Okay, let's just, I mean, let's move on from your bullshit. Oh, look at that face. I wanna punch your face. I wanna punch it so bad. Now, Alatunde will lead us in. Thank you, Sneakle. Okay, his, his glasses. If you're gonna wear glasses while, uh, recording yourself you need to have some the screen away from you so you're not having that glare on your eyes that's just more of a recommendation for anybody out there who wants to record themselves make certain that the screen's not facing your glasses so we just see the, the screen itself what appreciate it which two, uh, three. introducing michelle yo hey hi see, there's the 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 two women who have glasses they don't the bottom two women on the bottom two rows, I'm about to burp. 
they're, they're glasses. Like, there's no reflection in there. Everyone else has a reflection. The bottom two women are doing it right. <laughs> Doug Jones? Okay, I don't care about who these people are. Let's just move on. Bunch of people I just don't give a fuck about. Interior Discovery Bridge. Red alert, whipping from Saru to the con to OO at her console. Battle stations, report. Weapons armed and ready, sir. And we whip off Obo, making an invisible transition to interior. Okay, in all honesty, this is... I like the idea of what they're doing. But it's just a little... It's a little bit off. Enterprise bridge. Shields at maximum, Captain. Transmit to all ships. <laughs> what type of acting was that? Send to all ships. Like, you just... You didn't put any heart and soul in it, you little flazy fuck. <laughs> this is Captain Pike. We have one job. Get Commander Burnham and Discovery through the wormhole. Like, you want to add a little bit... Like, I don't know if that's how you act on the show, but... I... I you, yeah. Section 31. Oh, this is, is so cringe. Way. Please, no. Interior Discovery Luke Corridor, steam billowing, crew running every which way, Burnham... And again, I, I, if this was any other type of show doing this type of thing, I would support them. Because they're Star Trek, I have a bit of a bias being against them. Because I don't... If, if they say, like, hey, we have... Maybe we're leaning left a little bit more, but how, what does that have anything to do with the show? The show is these characters are what matter. <gasps> I would love you! <laughs> like, whatever it is on the show, I want to support that. Like, hey, we might disagree in the real world, but we're here specifically for Star Trek, so we need to create good shows for Star Trek and what that means. Not what we want Star Trek to portray in the real world, no, Star Trek has always been a fantasy that which we can escape the real world to get into. Have you ever seen a Trekkie in the in the olden days? They were weird looking. <laughs> they still are. <laughs> Take frame, racing like mad toward engineering. We track with them, almost at full sprint. Discovery will navigate into the clearest possible position. Oh, that guy is so boring. <laughs> oh my gosh. Exterior space. Cost cut with Pike on the bridge. Uh, as rich. You know, the CGI, again, as a model, ain't that bad. But I'd rather see some, instead of CGI, do drawings. A drawing would be more exciting, actually. Ooh, take everybody out, like all the voice actors, but instead do it as like a the, the, the wall, whatever that thing is, where it's just the wall panel. You show a little scene. You show them uh, maybe if they're at the bottom of the screen. Like, they could have done this better, but they're... Tr I, uh, having a lot of money and having a lot of fame or name recognition doesn't make you good. They could have done this a little bit more grassroots feeling, but it feels, it just feels like a sh hollow shell of it. shuttles itself. exit the bay, we soar toward the side of Discovery. Again, CGI, woohoo, but it's not CGI, you don't have to do that. Where retrofitted pods launch, launch yeah. and defend her perimeter. The voice Walk acting is horrendous. And you know, so you have to mute this for a second, because... Again, this voice acting is horrible. Oh, ooh, someone different. I'm gonna adjust the composite automatically. I'll do it manually before clearing each piece for assembly. I'm not detecting any- Again, she was pretty good. Like, again, I want to punch her face, but she had a pretty good voice act. She did really good. Micro variances. No, I need a surgical spanner, not a piece What is, what is with your eyebrows, I'm sir? not detecting any micro variances. No. What's with your eyebrows? No, I need a surgical spanner, not a standard engineering coupler. <laughs> like... She doesn't belong on the show. Oh, I'm gonna probably have to skip this entire thing. Oh my gosh, this is so cringe. No. <laughs> oh, perfect timing. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, we're done. I'm done. We're we're skipping. We're moving on. We're shut up, y'all's face. There's only like two people on the show I want to listen to. The. Uh, woman in yellow and uh, the guy at the very bottom right hand corner. Like those are the only two people I'd be worthy listening to. I don't. They're actually pretty good with their voice acting. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Man, I'm be. Oh, so this just goes on and on and on. Yeah, for character, if if you're like a fan of the show, I'm certain this is like really like oh yay. But uh, my gosh, how much bullshit is there? So much talking oh my gosh i can't keep am i gonna keep going somebody hand me a somebody hand me a gatorade <laughs> oh, oh, oh this marathon is going on forever <laughs> oh wait do we have different people we have different people Ooh, these different people different people
<laughs> okay, dude. Why? Are... Is this prodigy? Everything I saw. This is how it starts. Oh my gosh, I want to fucking bitch slap her. <laughs> I thought she was a good voice actor, but that sounded so weird. It really did. Uh, who are you? I've been really been thinking about my gratitude uh, for being a part of this. Who are you? Okay, we're gonna be listening to some more bullshit. Let's listen to more bullshit. And now I will be handing things off to EP and Code Showrunner, Michelle Paradise, who will be moderating our cast and Q&A today. Uh, thanks. Thanks to you, Dave. Um, so uh, these are questions that have been submitted uh, for all of you. This one's actually for me, but I'm curious how any of you might respond. Um, how- Gonna pause it just in case CBS, you know, all that good stuff. How important is it to you to continue the tradition of Star Trek uh, taking a social and political stance at a political stance okay what's the political stance will no no here's the question will star trek ever support wall building within one nation between another nation or are nation building no longer a fundamental part of the world as a as a non non trekkie i don't know this type of material it's a question i legitimately have for the people who have hijacked Star Trek for, and again, even the purpose of taking a social and political stance. I don't think Star Trek has ever had a political stance. They've talked about politics, but they've always tried to rationale from what I've seen from the shows. They've always tried to rationale around them. They've always tried to introduce them in a very intellectual way, rather than just saying what the political stance is, and if you disagree, then therefore you're intellectually wrong or stunted. So to you to continue the tradition of Star Trek uh, taking a social and political stance as you enter season three. I love you. Uh, <laughs> I it's love everything. you. <laughs> it's so like eager. Yeah, I mean, I think it's everything. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's everything. I mean, uh, I want to punch your face. There's so much paint punch. There's so much face punching I want to do on the show. <laughs> Star Trek, of course, is, 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 you know, it's fiction, it's science fiction. Okay, if it's science fiction, then it, okay. How you validate, well, it's science fiction. Yes, science fiction, it's fake, okay? But it's what you do with the story, with the characters. Where are you, it, where are you gonna go with this? I, I don't know. <sighs> it's always meant to imagine a future and a world in which people uh, are are valued for who they are. The con people being va <sighs> content of their character, not yes, the content of their character. And the content of the character. If you have a shit ideology, and I go against you because you're a shit ideology, I think Black Lives Matter is a horrible. A horrible organization you must hate black people according to them that's what it is they're trying to promote black lives matter it's a star trek has been hijacked i never like that word is an incredibly good word to use i'm late to the party i really am about really realizing that it's like i've heard other people say it it never really clicked in until oh they're politically active and black lives matter well i, I disagree with black lives matter but we're promoting it but, but they're wrong. They've been rioting and they've been they've killed people in the streets. Well, we're promoting it. Go fuck yourself, Star Trek. Not the color of their skin, not their gender, not their gender expression. No, 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 no. I get to judge you based off your age. You have a certain lifespan and you have a certain de uh, degree of competence of a particular age. And if I can show, like, oh my gosh, you look like Picard, um, Patrick Stewart, he's old. He can be still with it, but he's at a point where he's too old to deal with it. That is a reality. It doesn't mean that because you're old, we should do whatever. It's that be we can recognize certain things that are real about your age. There are certain things real about your sex and gender that should we judge you based off of that without knowing anything about it? No, 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 no. There's a certain reality that comes with your sex, your gender, your skin color per se. Because if... A as for an example, if um, there's 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 a there's a black family in my neighborhood who I have no I have never met them I've always just like w waved to them but they have five plus pit bulls tied with strings to trees in their backyard. Their grass they they keep their grass and their yard incredibly unkept. Their mailbox is somewhat destroyed and leaning over. Uh, they have phenomenal cars, like 
their cars do not match the value of their home. They're, they have rims on their cars. It's like, wow, that's very stereotypical. <gasps> oh, that's racist. I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> like, I'm not even... If they, came, if they came out with some watermelon and some purple drink, I'd be like, huh, I, have, I want to take a picture of this. This is amazing. <laughs> but it's... Again, there, there's a value. There's a judgment. If a, if, if a white guy just came out down the street and be like, "Hey, yo," blah, 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 they started like cursing out everybody, like, "Hey, yo," blah, 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 and did some like rapping or something, like, "Wow, that sounds very black." <laughs> it's not black because the majority of pe black people probably listen to rap, and it's like, "Well, that's racist. That's racist. How can it be racist if it's statistically true?" <laughs> it's like I don't have those statistics. I don't. But there's a statistic. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm burying myself here. <laughs> Oh, that'll happen when you talk to your talk talk for a bit. Ugh, let's keep let's keep going, but again, there's, there's to, to get back to the point. There are certain realities that come with certain immutable characteristics. Being old, there's a there's a level of competency that a younger person, just because you're old, doesn't mean that you're not competent or have wisdom. And just because you're young doesn't doesn't mean that you don't have the right idea. But you maybe need to learn from the old so on and so forth. It's just there are certain realities. How do we judge that? That's a good question. And not their age, um, and you know, in this explosive time, it seems more resonant now than ever that we help sh shine a light on all of those issues. Or, or we go past those events and say, I don't fucking care about your race. I don't care about your skin color. I don't care about your ethnicity. I don't care about your water level in your body, <laughs> how hydrated you are. <laughs> Let's just pick a characteristic. Your blood type. <laughs> I don't care. <gasps> you don't care. You're evil. <laughs> and it's not always doing it like, it's not shining a light like super vividly all the time. It's just, it's part of the fabric of it. And that by itself is, is leading the way. Yeah. What is that woman with the bottom, uh, second of the right hand side, the redhead? It looked like she just woke up. Her hair is atrocious. I think what I'm grateful for um, is the fact- Oh, do we have to go through every single person what they're grateful for? Just say two, three people and move on. That Star Trek has always been this um, aspiration for, for our society, for our- I would agree. Our country, that it has always set a goal um, and that it's been our job to help- Ooh, okay. I mean, it's not bad, but it, it's our job to create that, which I would agree. It's your job to create a Star Trek that is Star Trek. But the issue is that ugh, it's getting, it's a fine line. You're you're crossing a fine line. You're not crossing. You're not you're not jumping over it, but you definitely have your toe in the water. It's our job to create that future that people in this war in our world can look to as to where we need to go. A responsibility to be politically active. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Create good Star Trek, and Star Trek comes from the characters created. That's the whole point. If your basis is whatever the current political thing is, okay. In uh what's the the, the lower deck, Star Trek lower decks? They make the white character, the one white character on the show, a fucking bitch. He's a cunt, SJW millennial. He's dyed hair, weak. They don't make him strong. They really don't. He's like, oh, oh my, oh my gosh. He, they, it's like you don't have to be strong, but again, some level of competency to even becoming a member of the lower decks. <laughs> some level of competency, some level of strength, but he's an absolute bitch boy. <laughs> Gosh. If you, again, it's one of those things that if we want to go down to looking at skin color, that would be something that I'd be caring about. Something that I, I kind of been caring about, but it's like at the same time, I don't care. But I, again, when you start talking about skin color, can I start talking about skin color and the representation you've done on the show? It's okay. You're white. You have many other shows. Oh, da 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 da. Regardless of the other shows, what is the re representation of this show? Well, let us make you into a bitch boy. <laughs> oh wait, I, I, can't, I identify with the character because of my skin color. Wait a second. Yeah, and that's the that's the dialogue I hate to bring up. Sometimes my brain goes down that path. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. 
because what matters is your character. Uh, John Stewart from the Green uh, Green Lantern from uh, Justice League. John Stewart, the I think the second or third uh, iteration of Green Lantern. He's black. The best part about him was that he had a military background. I've always resonated to that. I love that character pretty much because of that. I've been in the military and still identify with Jon Stewart because he's a he, just because of his straight and arrow, making his bed every single morning. He's by the books, by the rules type of type of guy, and he has some difficulties of being that person. And you get to see that unfurl, interacting and relating with certain people, and it's interesting. They've had an interracial relationship with Hawk Girl. Guess what? The whole point of that was it was interracial, but the most important part with the characters themselves inter like I never cared about that. But now I'm supposed to care about that type of thing, and that's that's what I really hate. It's like it had nothing to do with your fucking skin color. It's that they were man and woman fucking different worlds, legitimate different worlds. And that was so so great. Again, if that oh man, you know what? I probably I'm going to give Star Trek a not Star Trek, the original Star Trek, the original Star Trek a pass. Because if the people who created Justice League, who created this the 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 love relationship between Hawk Girl, Hawk Woman and John Stewart of the Green Lantern, that was an interracial relationship. And if that was them trying to be po like of any and all, like, I don't understand how that would be an issue in the 90s or the 2000s when I was watching it. I never cared about that. But if it was an issue where they're like, hey, let's create this, but at the same time, even if you did have that quote unquote representation, they weren't shoving it down your throat. Their job was not to be politically active or try to affect culture, but instead create good stories and characters. That's the big difference here. Star Trek has been hijacked by politically active people trying to affect the real world through their work. And I hate that. It's like, you can create a good show that does change the culture, but it comes from creating a good show, a good performance. That's what matters. To, to help not only imagine that future, but to create it. And so I think going into season three, which I'm not too certain as to why, because this Comic Con at home only has 2,500 views. That's not a lot of people. There, there are so many video, so many YouTube channels I watch on a daily basis that have more than that in their first one two hours. It's ridiculous how much power CBS, how, how much money CBS has, and how much viewer or watch rate that they actually get from people. Um, we have an opportunity to... And it's nothing against the other people on the show. I think they're trying to do good. I think that they think that they're trying to do good. I know they're trying to do good. Some of the... I have nothing against their actual acting, but like uh, Spock at the top right-hand corner, he actually does say something that is a little bit off from the original Star Trek, and it's ridiculous. <sighs> we'll get into that in a bit, but... I'm going to create a sec. Let's go with it. Because it, this is going to get pretty long, I've got to take a, a break too. <laughs> I'll, I'm, going to, I'm going to make another video. But we're going to start right here. And we're back. Really have a conversation about the world that we want to create. The world you want to create is not the world. It's, it's, <clears throat> <clears throat> the world you want to create in the Star Trek world, that's the whole point. Hopefully I'm applying that evenly. Hopefully ap across all things that I actually have interest in and things that I've watched in the past, that I've done that fairly. And if I haven't, that's a folly on me. What matters is the story you want to create. The, war the story, the characters, the world. In that universe. Because that universe is not this one. It may give us a, um, a glimpse of what we what is possible, but my question is, how are you approaching that? Because Alex Kurtzman came out and said, I am doing, the, the, the point is not to promote Star Trek, but to promote Black Lives Matter and the NAACP. 
which are two specifically non not specifically colored people protective again what about every other type of color like i'm not i'm I'm not i'm not associated with those things again it's like one black lives matter is a political association it's a political group an activist group that has a specific political agenda trying to change the culture in a specific way well there's been riots all over the country riots not protests riots people wanting to ban police officers like remove them defund them i don't believe in that you need police officers regardless there needs to be reform but you can't just do that fuck black lives matter (laughs) it's not fuck black people it's fuck the political affiliation the association with that specific activity politically and how each of us has a responsibility to to create it together so uh, um, I'm grateful for the history that Star Trek has um, created. In, in t- yes, you've hijacked that Star Trek, which is unfortunate. It's, I'm grateful for the old Star Trek, but where it's going is bullshit. In terms of giving us something to aspire to, and so I hope that we continue that. Good. I hope you. I hope you do too. That's not, that's good. That's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> Let's be happy. Something. I I oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go on. I'm not going to interrupt Michelle Yeo. Please. Oh go. my gosh! Just talk. <laughs> <laughs> There's twelve of y'all. You're going to interrupt each other every once in a while. <laughs> I shall leave. I just want to say just, that tradition is just part of our DNA. And we just okay. Well, if tradition is part of your DNA, <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> oh, that could be slightly racist, but it's funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ah, okay. I'm probably going to hell for that one. Anyways, if tradition is an important part of the aspect of Star Trek, are you abiding by what has already been laid with the original Star Trek? Or are you, be, are, you, are you using creative freedoms to create your own Star Trek? Again, I love tradition, but let's create something new, okay? Good, I, I love tradition too. Are you keeping true to what has been in the past? For example, I love St- uh, Spider- uh, not Spider-Man, Superman. What, which one was it? Superman Prime? What am I, <laughs> what am I thinking of? Oh my gosh, let me, look, I gotta look it up, one, one moment. Okay, it was called All-Star Superman. I think, personally at least, that it is one of the greatest renditions of Superman who, spoiler warning for anybody who hasn't seen it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's spoil the ending because it's just phenomenal, um, but they do such a great job showcasing the magnificence of Superman and the character and universe within that show. They really do. I, 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 it's, uh, it's hard to explain without giving anything away. I don't want to give anything away, actually. I was trying to think of, like, well, what would be a good story? Because if I say something at the very beginning, it sets it up for the very end, like, the the entire story, but that would uh, ruin it for the very ending or something. It's just, it's great. It really is. And they they carry the spirit of who Superman is. And they do their own thing, but they carry the spirit of it. Is Star Trek carrying the spirit of the original Star Trek? Or are they just doing their own creative freedoms and doing what they want? They say that they love the original Star Trek, but it doesn't seem like they actually care about the original Star Trek. That's just, yeah. Just have to continue to strive together for what we believe in, for what is right. We know what is... What we believe is right and wrong? Okay, that sounds like political activism. Because what is right and wrong is subjective, is it not? That you could actually reason to determine that there are certain things that are objectively better or worse, not just things that we know are right and wrong? Like, I think that it is wrong to go against this, or that we should have a standing army to go against an ar- to go against someone. And it's like, you need to defund that. You need to have a, you need to defund the police. It's like, well, wait a second. What if there's a side that, in the original Star Trek, they would have done this, um, where is police, is having a police force good? That there might be a necessity, a necessary evil, a, ne- a necessity that overrides what I think is currently correct. That there's a good reason for that. That would, that would be from how I understand Star Trek. As somebody who is just a layman who has almost no understanding of Star Trek beyond just what I've gathered over the years. Uh, seeing some clips, seeing a few shows, a few episodes here and there. I respected that. The biggest, the biggest scene that actually showcases that is when they were trying to determine whether or not Data was property of the 
um, of the military. I don't remember what, the USS Enterprise. I think that was just the ship. But um, whether or not star, uh, Data was property or an individual, quote unquote, human who has autonomy, that 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 was a very big episode. That was a very awesome scene. I think there were some again some points in there that was just a little bit off, but. It was great to even just having that discussion. It really is. And that was 30 years ago. But they were, they were discussing what is either right or wrong, but they were making good claims and specific points as to why one thing was either good or bad. It's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And now you're just coming out and saying that you, you originally believe that Star Trek, I, I love the tradition of Star Trek, what it re represented, what it was. But now let's go with what what is the opposite of Star Trek and just say what we believe is right and wrong, rather than showcasing what may be right and might be wrong on both sides. To actually just analyze it and think critically about it. And we have to do it together. Um, from from what I understand, uh, someone explained this to me, or I heard it from someone, is that Spock, um, Le Leonor, I always pr mispronounce his name, I always butcher his name, but Leonard Nimoy, person, the actor who played, um, who made. Spock, who is who Spock is, um, he was given uh, the, the guidelines that to to play Spock is just to be somebody who's constantly curious about things, to be very analytical. That's awesome. That's fantastic. It's like that's that's the spirit of Spock. Keep that. You can roll with it, change it a little bit, but that's the spirit of who Spock is. Someone who is analytical. It doesn't mean he can't feel. It doesn't mean that he can't. Um, think in a different terms or maybe even be impulsive in one or two spots but to be critically analyzing things on a constant basis I just I thought that was a not amazing yes. amazing and that's I'm pretty much continuing that just striving and something that I who are you I've been really been thinking about my gratitude uh, for she has a dot on her lip it's weird for being a part of this franchise is that it's about the infinite combinations of diversity that our work. It's not diversity. I thought equality, because you. <laughs> oh, they're nonsense words. Because diversity is not a strength unless we actually agree on fundamentals. Because you put a black man and a white man in the same room, do they agree on specific fundamental values? If not, they're going to go against each other. Which, again, that's the entire, the impo the entire point is that we agree on a particular thing and we're going towards that thing. Diversity in itself is not an ultimate good and it's something that's only supplemented when we actually agree on what is good, what is right. Gosh. Work is never done. That there's still uh, representation and visibility. Representation, visibility. Oh my gosh, I wanna be seen, guys. Yeah, to be seen and so- Oh, she even said I'm it. really grateful to be a part of our franchise. Oh, no, 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 no. Is that over and over again and the work isn't done but it's pretty exciting i think that one thing i value about specifically your hair is messy fix it our version of star trek is that we don't our version of star trek you know again i love tradition our version of star trek yeah you can have a version of star trek but does it keep hold keep the spirit of the original star trek it doesn't don't make assumptions that we've already reached perfection that we allow that there's more to do within ourselves and within the utopia of the Federation. Okay, if that has already been made, again, one of the things that they've sort of retconned the entire story is that there is nothing for them to actually... The, the entire point of Star Trek... I don't know how to process this. I really... I'm trying to find words. I Let's listen to her again, as much as I don't want to. I think that one thing I value about specifically our version... Our version. ...of Star Trek is that we don't make assumptions that we've already reached perfection. We don't make the assumption that we've already reached perfection, that we have to change ourselves and the utopia that we think that we thought we created or something. That entire bullshit, if you really want to think about it, is that uh, Picard, I think, once said in uh, The Next Generations is that the entire point of, of what's happening is that we've, we've moved past all those, like, the monetization and monies and stuff, but what, what matters is that we focus on developing ourselves. But what they're doing is they're trying to change society first, which is incredibly of an SJW type of ideology. It really is. It's 
it's very good when you're trying to actually make good change. But is there evil within ourselves? Yes. Stop trying to change another person. Change yourself. You improve yourself. Have an entire show where everyone else is racist around you and the Starfleet Command and everybody that's on board has certain principles and there's a law on the ship that says that regardless of whatever your quote-unquote race, creed, color, nationality, or sex, whatever those in specifically immutable trait and characteristics um, or whatever the ideology is, is that we take it with uh, the same approach as any other person. And using the specific word person. That if you're a Klingon, you have personality, you have personhood. So it's like if you can reason what makes personhood, and you can actually have a, an entire show based on that. You can do this correctly, Star Trek. You don't have to be fucking bitch boys. You don't have to be fucking horrible. All you have to do within your show is, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again because that was actually a pretty good thought, is that have it where, if you really want to talk about that topic, go to have this Starfleet, have this Starfleet or the Star Command, the ship, whatever you want to call it, the Enterprise, to, to go to another place and the, 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 the interaction they have with specific species and aliens, talk about those type of things. But on board, they don't care about your fucking sex or gender or f skin color or size or height or whatever. It does not matter because what matters is your competence, your application, your purpose, your mission, why you do it. Those are the things that matter. More importantly, your, ap your ability to do it. Because if you can't do it, why are you on the ship? <laughs> you, don't, you need to have a specific role that you ha are very competent in, and that's what matters. And you can have maybe a disproportionate amount, like even saying that the, the people, the engineers that we have are specifically women. Not because we care about women or anything, but or that we don't like men. It's just we have an application that whoever is the best gets to be in that position. And then it's... It, more often than not, it is men. But again, men or women, here's a standard. If you can meet that standard, I don't care what your sex is. You can have an entire show, an entire series based off that. If not a one-shot TV show where you have like Star Trek, not Discovery, but Star Trek, not Prodigy. What would be a good name for it? Star Trek... Um, oh, the, 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 the Unknown or something. Star Trek to the Unknown. Or Star, Star Trek rehashing things. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I, could, I was better at that. But the, the Star Trek, the legendary run. Um, I'm just looking at a thing I've written on my whiteboard. That's the only thing I'm coming up with. Star Trek, the Logitech. <laughs> the Logitech or something. Um, yeah, you, you could just have a show based off that. Where you could have in the very first episode where this it's, it's, it is this utopia on the show it feels like star trek it looks like star trek it's like you have a lot of quote unquote representation on the show but what matters is how people are treating each other and that's what star trek has been Be, you, you don't try to don't fix what ain't broke you don't try to fix something that isn't broken because if you try to fix something that is not broken you might as you might be breaking it beyond repair you might be breaking it not realizing that you've broken it and when you break it you try to put it back together and if you're trying to fix it because you thought it was broken, what do you think the original thing you're trying to build is? You'll just create something new or just replace it. That's what's happening with Star Trek. That sucks. That we allow that there's more to do within ourselves and within the, Federation. the utopia gotcha. of the Federation and beyond. Pausing it. And I think that's a really important message to hear right now because there are a lot of people who assume some of these issues are solved and they're not. Yes. I disagree that some of these positions that you hold are incorrect. And what you're doing right now with that presumption is that if the, you disagree with some of these things to be correct, you think some, some of these positions are wrong, um, d diversity is not an ultimate good. It's whatever you are thinking and feeling, and that's what matters. You, if there were a bunch of white people on, this, on, a, on the Enterprise, all of them were white, 100% males, 100% white. One, that would be a sausage fest. Two... Um, what does that have anything to do with the competency or the values that matter on that thing? If you're judging, it's like, oh, there's so many white people. You're part of the problem! If you believe that, if there's if there's a bunch of white people on the Enterprise, you're, and you think that's problematic, let's reverse it. There's a bunch of black people on the Enterprise. All, all women. Uh, a, 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 a guy comes out and says, oh, that's problematic. You're part of the problem. You can have all black representation, why are they on that show? Why do they have this? Is it a culture of women? Is it that the men are not being put in a second, but the women are just higher in um, 
in application? Is it a species who has had women be more competent than men? That would be something worthy of discussing, worthy of exploring, because it's a different species. That, re that again, as a species, it doesn't matter, because you can have, again, a, a guy come onto the show and says that I'm actually as competent as you guys, and all the women are saying no because you're a guy, get to the back of the line. And you can really showcase that because that is something that no one ever sees. Because we have all this, these tropes in our head that, oh, it's a male-dominated area, therefore a woman coming to the power, that's a good thing. But whoa, 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 wait a second. Just because you're a woman trying to climb the ranks doesn't mean that you're competent enough to even be there. And if, they, and if you are there and you're not of the same sex and they discount you, well, why don't we have, create a show where you're, you become the captain and the ca and it's like that again. It's been done so many times. Let's do the reverse. Again, I actually would enjoy a show where they actually created a captain. Um, like, I, I they could do this show correct, but I, oh, man, if you think they, one of the again, what's what's really wrong with this? What what she was saying is that because you think what um, I want to hear specifically utopia of the Federation and beyond. And I think that's a really important message to hear right now because there are a lot of people who assume some of these issues are solved. If if you believe that the sh if the messages that they're trying to portray or what is what they believe is correct in society is wrong, you're part of the problem. Look at the guy on the right hand side looking to the right <laughs> with his eyes. Oh, I'm kind of I'm, I'm with you there. Like, uh... and they're not. So I love that about our show, and I think um, it's important. It's tough. It's so amazing. It's amazing. I know a lot about how to engage in my reality at this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Mary. I want to piggyback and say... Piggyback? Are you calling her fat? Please call her fat. That I, I think a story like this, speaking of... Or piggybacking on what everyone has said... Yeah, uh, she said piggybacking multiple times. <laughs> a story like this that can... Um, that can give us an example of what that future might look like. Yes, I know, political activism. I think it, uh, at least I hope, that it um, really holds us accountable. Us accountable or everyone else who's disagreeing with me accountable? Because if it holds you accountable, are you going to self-reflect and realize that if I start focusing on skin color, if another person focuses on skin color and looks at the world the exact same way, but through different, uh, but cares about different particular activities, like, well, I care about black. There is an incredible wave on Instagram and Pinterest where someone posts themselves, specifically a black woman, or a, let's just say, person of color, and they say, hashtag melanin, be beautiful melanin, or it's like, I have melanin in my skin and I'm beautiful. Because the opposite of that would be a white person, a white woman coming out and saying, like, I have no melanin, I'm white, and I'm beautiful. It's like, what? That's weird. Okay, you're beautiful. Now, I would say, like, for a white woman, you're beautiful. Because there's certain white people who, like, I can, because there's a lot of white women, I can look and, like, wow, okay, there's some white women that have uh, some very comparable or very similar characteristics and traits. And I'd be like, wow, you look better than that woman. You look better than that woman. That woman looks incredibly ugly. That's one aspect. The other aspect is how you care about other people, how you treat people. Because some people are just born with genetic beauty. That's amazing. I applaud you for nothing that you had any control over. But how you treat other people, how you act, that is something that you can control. That is what is most important. And again, as a, as a man, <laughs> it's like, do, do, do I start? start I, I don't even know. <laughs> it's like, I was going to go down a rabbit hole with that one, but I don't even want to bring that up. Like, as, as, as a man, I'm happy when there's some attractive women on the show. And competent? Oh, that will just, that, that will, that will raise the flags. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, and shows us, as Mary was just saying, that, um, as both Marys were saying, that the work is not done. Yeah, the work is never done because political activism, because fucking white people. <laughs> and that it's... A I know that's not what they mean, but again, I think that's what they mean. They, I really do. Like, I, I don't think that any person on the show has any issue with whatever black people think. I'm using that as an example. I'm using that as an example, and it's an unfortunate example. Because what if black people actually think that there's some superiority within black skin color? Like your melanin, like what Nick Cannon once said that it, you, uh, melanin, ha, people who have melanin have soul. People who have melanin have compassion. He said that a few, uh, within the last week or two. That's incredibly racist. 
or specious, speciousist, or whatever, skin colorist. <laughs> but are they going to call that out? Like, it seems like, again, Black Lives Matter, if you disagree with that, it seems like there's more of an anti-white bias, and all the white men just shut up. But that we go down that discussion ra uh, rabbit hole when we start talking about, hey, you as a sp particular skin color, and maybe I'm even putting fodder into the problem <laughs> maybe i am the issue you know what i probably accept that as a uh, as a possibility let's move on because i'm sort of reaching unfamiliar territory <laughs> but maybe i'm just trying to find a problem to, for problem's sake maybe again maybe what i was talking about was wrong you know what i'm grateful for that i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep this end of the video but it's okay to be wrong express it be wrong po somebody points it out then you move on then you're done with it. <laughs> so, so done with Star Trek. About confronting, confronting ourselves and really confronting each other. Confronting each other? I'm gonna confront you right now. Why are you politically active on a show with Black Lives Matter specifically and why are you not promoting White Lives Matter? Because white people, there you go, you're a part of the problem. We see that in the- Again, I don't care either way. I'm not really a fan of political affiliations or a, Political messages that are being in inserted into the show so vehemently are into your face without actually being part of the actual universe in which you're creating. Like, there's some things I, I if, if I don't even am aware of what you were trying to say in the show, and I just love the show, you did right. You did a good job. So, yeah. this story um, within the legacy. For example, uh, V for Vendetta. It's all against the uh, the crazy white supremacist conservative party um, on the show, and if you and the morally good people are the progressive liberals. That's what it was. But I can still watch it regardless of like the political association because it's still the activity of a tyrant who's taken over and people and that that group of people silencing you because of your political belief system or how you want to act or live or speak or behave. Again, there's a bunch of people in 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 the world who believe that we should still shut down businesses because of covid but we should allow activists to be out there socializing and protesting their government which i am all for that but i'm also in the favor of you have the right to you have the right to congregate with whoever you want if you want to get sick with those people go for it if you want to smoke yourself to death go for it i don't care i'm not paying for it go for it if you want to eat yourself to death go for it i'm not paying for it go for it if you want to if you want to have sex with fifty thousand people i don't care go for it i'm not paying for anything i'm not going to pay for that and if you're going to say that i have to pay for it because you're going to you are trying to push the message within the unit within the the culture that if you if that what's morally good is we pay for everybody's health care like okay no 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 what responsibility do you have with your own body is that question not being talked about it's not because you if you disagree with us therefore you hate women's issues women's topics go fuck yourself that's the biggest issue as to why i have there's some liberals that i love listening to adam krigler on a timcast irl adam krigler who um he brought up uh, the co-host on the timcast irl uh, youtube channel he brought up a point when that NFL, I think it was NFL player, or I think it was NFL, I'm going to go with that. The NFL player who, who went into his own home or someplace, and he, fa and he saw the string that was coming down from the garage door open, and he, he thought of it to be a noose. And the, A, that's ridiculous. But, and, and there were FBI agents, I think 11, that, were, that came down and actually investigated the entire thing, and it was all, it wasn't a hoax, but he really did think that. And... One of the things is that I, Adam Krigler presented the idea of what it would be like to be someone like him in this day and age with what's going on with all the hysteria. And it was, well, everybody's making fun of that one guy who thought there was a lynching or like somebody had a, a noose in his garage or something. He, he presented it in such a wonderful way. Like, I, I originally didn't care about that. Like, really, guy? Really? But you know what? As I... I I don't ever have to have ever worried about that. There's nobody in my history I've ever seen that. You know, there probably was, but like to be that person going through this thing in the current modern day, eight hey, modern right now and the current hysteria that's happening, it's like he might have saw it and actually believed that that was actually happening. Not but because he wanted to go after somebody, but because he believed it was without any ill harm or something. And again, that was just so fascinating the way that Adam was presenting it. Yeah.
But again, that's what I enjoy about listening to people that I disagree with. It's like you and I, we 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 both need to agree on three fundamental things. And I, I've said this multiple times to myself, and I usually say it on some of the videos, but I'll say it right now. There's three things that we have to fundamentally agree upon before we can do anything else as people. And it's not political, it's just truth within the world. One, cause and effect reality. That's how we can do science. If you can't believe that, if you don't believe that there's an objective world in which we live in, even though we might be subjective creatures, that there's an objective world in which you live in, how you think, how you speak, how you act, how you behave, are all factors in the results that you get in your world. If you don't believe that, we're done. I, I don't know how to converse with you. I think you're retarded. But if you if we can we can agree on that and then I disagree with what things have caused what, that's the whole point about discovering. It's okay to be wrong. It's acceptable to be wrong. It's important to be wrong, but it's not in, but it's not good to believe that it's just subjective, because if you believe that everything is subjective, you're part of the problem. You're poison. You're venom. You are a virus. You, ha you the, the virus inside of you of what you believe is to be true. Once you change that, you change. So. But the second thing is that uh, there is a moral system. There's a moral system in which to abide by. What that moral system is, why we believe in it, why are we supposed to behave that way, why is that good, why are those things bad, those are excellent questions. Some people believe that the, the universe was created 6,000 years ago, or the Earth was created 6,000 years ago. There's some people that believe it, there, it was created a million years ago. There's some people that were uh, th think that it's... Uh, that it was made four billion years ago. Okay, there's a lots of people who disagree with that. There's a lot of people. It's like, hey, smoking is good. Um, smoking is good. Having an abortion is good. Having an abortion is wrong. Why? Why are those things either good or bad? Well, let's go back to number one: the cause and effect relationships within the world. If we we need to uh, accept that and then have that discussion. Number two, we need to um, uh, we need to go towards what is good. What is that thing that is good? Well, let's go back to number one, where we can actually use reason and evidence as to why those things are supportive in what, uh, and so on and so forth. Number three, number three is that responsibility is key. Individual responsibility and personal accountability. That groups of people, uh, social dynamics, how we think, how we behave as people, uh, a culture, what we believe to be normal, that's important, a responsibility on that level. As a society, as an American, as a countryman, if wherever you are from, that is what matters, is how you think and behave and, um, and so on and so forth. There's levels of responsibility that a country has, that a government has, that a state has, that a family has. It's not just the individual, but it's also the group. But you have to believe that the individual has that level of responsibility. So if you're poor, if you start blaming the world around you, if you start blaming your society, if I start asking, well, what about your world? What have you done? What are your habits? What have you done for the last 24 hours? I want you to write it down verbatim. I want you for the next two weeks to write down every single activity you do. Do you, How much TV do you watch? How much YouTube do you watch? How much social media do you d waste your time? How much of these things could you have improved of so on and so forth? And it's like if because if we go back to number one, the cause and effect reality that causes results for you to happen, and then what is good and bad, because of the law of comparison, if you have two things, you can compare them. Is one thing hotter or colder compared to another thing? Is one thing rougher or smoother compared to another thing? Is one thing beautiful or ugly in comparison? And from those comparisons, you can find out what is good and what is bad, what is better and what is worse. And then from that, we can go with, well, the responsibility to make those things happen because you have those actions that can make it work. Because your actions cause re results and what results are either good or bad, better or worse. And you have the responsibility to go back to number one, two, and three. One, two, and three. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a loop. We have to agree upon that. We can disagree on how it is to be applied or what things in the universe are applicable to what and who is applicable to what. But if we don't even agree on those three things, there's nothing we can have an agreement on. There's nothing. If you don't believe that the individual has a responsibility, the child has no responsibility until a certain age. The difference between a child and adult is the level of responsibility that you have. And more importantly, the inherent nature that you are of a certain age have a specific amount of responsibility you need to uphold. That's truth. That has been, it's not even just th something that has been upheld for hundreds of millennia, of hundreds of thousands of generations, but what matters is how applicable that is, how truthful it is. It's like you of a certain age are responsible, okay? 
you can be younger, you can be older, but there's certain a level of responsibility that you inherently are to have. That's important. How much? You don't have to be responsible for everything. I'm not responsible for how my food is grown, but I'm responsible for the food that I consume. That's something I can control. That's what's important. So, oh man. Uh, so this video, man, I'm, I'm, whew. That was, that was something. Okay, let's move on to the next video. I've been probably doing this for about two and a half hours already. Uh, I'm trying to set things up and everything, but man, this is pretty long. I'd probably need to have the air conditioning on because I'm sweating balls. If you were sweating your balls off, like that would not be a good medical condition. <laughs> you can only have that happen to you twice at most. <laughs> if it's any less, I'm sorry. If it's any, well, actually, if it's less, it's good. I want you to have as many. Men out there, I want you to have as much balls as possible, <laughs> as many balls as possible. And all of you, <laughs> all of you porn stars out there, I want you to have as many balls as possible. <laughs> hi <-yo! laughs> Oh, let's keep, let's get into this. Of this, of this, uh, of this franchise, so that's really what's going to propel us forward. It's Political activism is going to propel you forward. Fuck you! confronting ourselves confronting yourselves or telling everybody else of how right you are that's what i think you mean yeah if we're confronting ourselves will you confront yourself if i present you a question hey i don't give a fuck about your skin color yes now if there's more people who are a specific skin color doing something that shouldn't be a problem to you correct and if it is you're part of the problem i have my own biases but those biases can be right, they can be wrong. I'd like to think that the majority of the time it's right, but I'm open to that criticism. I'd like to think that I'm open to that criticism. I'm thinking aloud right now. Like I'm, there's this circus in my head and I think everybody's playing their own beat. That's a, that's a band. Why is it a circus? <laughs> a circus of, a, a band of circus folk. Each person is, a, um, <laughs> Tom, Tommy Jim is on the drums. Beep, 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 beep. That's, wait, what is that? Wait, what is the song that creates the Okay, let's keep going forward. Truthfully, and confronting each other, exposing ourselves in a way- Exposing yourselves like porn! <laughs> Oh man, this is not a kid show. It is not. Like we haven't before. Um, so I hope that we contribute um, in our iteration. I hope that we contribute uh, more. Oh, okay, I had like two notifications go off. That was important. Okay, moving on. Next to the movement. Yes, a movement being politically active. Go fuck yourself. And I can say that not because of your skin color, but because of your shitty viral, virus-like act, virus, viral, it's, your ideology is shit. And it is, acts like a virus. You make everybody weak, you break down everybody's walls, you spread, infect, and multiply. So if there's an issue with me, well, if I, it can become stronger because of my own ideology, because I can change myself, good, fantastic, I applaud you. But if you have to start changing other people, whoa, 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 start changing the thing within yourself, and then you can start changing other people. And more importantly, what is the source of that goodness? Why is that thing good? Man, I haven't had a Taco Bell in forever. You know, they disbanded the a grilled stuffed burrito, one pound of juicy goodness. It was, it was stuffed with rice and beans and guacamole and sour cream and like other types of beans and rice and veggies and stuff. It was glorious, but they cut it out because fuck them. I don't know why. I have to find a way to get that grilled stuff burrito because that's the only thing I have almost ever gotten when I was going out to eat, ever. That thing was delicious. Oh, that thing, you, you eat that, it was one pound. You could fill up with, me, I could eat and eat and eat, but boom, when I eat that, I'd be like, oh, that hit the spot. Because you could have chicken, steak, uh, or what was the other one? Grilled stuff. I think there were the only two. Grilled and st uh, chicken or steak. Yeah. But I always swapped between the two. I think there was a third one, like pork or something. <laughs> I don't remember. But, oh, man, that grilled stuff burrito. Because when you were eating it, you were eating a pound of, like, you could feel, like, every bite, 
everything you could ever want and it was in every single bite and oh man i have got oh, i'm gonna find that right now uh taco bell has the new has a grilled cheese burrito no they banned it where are that what the fuck taco bell dude if you have a grilled stuff burrito i want it Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go get it probably today, like right after I'm doing all this stuff, but oh my gosh, Taco Bell? No, commercial. Let's see this. Taco Bell is testing a grilled cheese burrito. Oh, look yes, at it. Shut up, I don't care about your face. I want to see the beauty. Oh, look at that. Oh man, is that, no, what? Dude, where I'm at, their taco grilled the, the grilled stuff burrito. They don't have it anymore. Oh, I am. This is gonna be a whole video of gross grilled stuff burrito greatness. Okay, Taco Bell tacos burritos grilled stuff burrito, uh, grilled cheese burrito. Well, wait, if they have the green grilled cheese burrito. Do, do they have any other type of burrito? Yeah, they got rid of. Oh, stop it! What are you doing? Go back. <laughs> That's there we go. Uh, cheese bean burritos, bean bur beef burrito, quesadilla, cream chicken, all this stuff. Yeah, they got rid of the grilled stuff burrito, but they're bringing back the grilled cheese burrito for only three bucks. Because I think the meat that they were putting in it was probably too expensive for them to do, and that is, it was like five, seven bucks or something. But it was worth every single bite. It was worth it. But if they're doing the grilled cheese burrito, I think that'll be a good supplementive and just put your own ham or something inside of it. I don't know, but I'm probably gonna go purchase that in a bit because look at that beauty oh, stop there we go grilled cheese burrito 710 uh, 710 calories oh that is so beautiful look at that but the grilled stuff burrito that they used to have i don't know if it's the same size it's probably like half the size which is bullshit but what ah man it doesn't even look as big either. It's probably like half, it's half the size. But the grilled stuff burrito, if you like hold out your hands close to each other, but not touching, like you're trying to like hold a small baby or infant, that's what a grilled stuff burrito was. And it was just beautiful. It was just delicious. I don't know how else to say it, but it was something that I would just gasm over. It was like, I'm kind of having those tisms inside of it. Not tisms, those, those, uh, I'm getting mouthwatery over it, man. It was so beautiful. Now let's go talk. start talking about Star Trek. Yay! <laughs> oh, fuck you, show. <laughs> and your political activism. That way. Um, Tunde, this question is, uh, is for you. Uh, can you describe a- Okay, he has already a fault there that he's recording with the sun behind him. And no one has ever, and because they're showing it, they're, they're not gonna say anything about it. It's like, dude, you have something reflective behind you. Bad, 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 bad. Moment or a scene that was especially rewarding for you as a director? When well, as a oh, he's a director? Oh, that's unfortunate to be associated to this show. <laughs> my guess is going to say something specifically political. You directed the finale. That's, that's my guess. Oh, boy, that's a <laughs> tough one to uh, pick from. Uh oh! Is this? I would say the fi um, final scene of the episode. I would say the final scene of the episode. Why? I would say that we know the Burnham has gone to the future. Burnham, I don't know who that is. And Spock walks out, and we walk onto the bridge. And Spock walks out, and we walk out onto the bridge. And the Enterprise, and he's no, and he's no longer got a beard. What the fuck? <laughs> I wish it was something political because that just sounds retarded him walking out without a beard and that's the most fun oh my gosh oh, 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 oh. the most interesting part the most fun thing you can think of of the entire star trek discovery being a fucking director is someone walking out without a beard Wow! <laughs> oh, dude, your show must suck if that's the case. I am so sorry, man. Like, you could probably have so much talent, but if that's your taste... Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Enterprise? He no longer has a beard. Oh, fascinating! <laughs> 
And he's no longer got a beard. He's no longer got a beard, guys. He's amazing. <laughs> and he walks up in front. He thinks about his sister. I heard about that he had a sister or something. And then goes to his station for the first time. Since then, we've been seeing the Enterprise. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> like... Okay, so it's not him walking out without the beard. The beard being a representation of him probably having gone through something and then the shaving, the cleaning it off is transitioning, that he's uh, he's metamorphosized, he's transitioned into someone who um, starts getting to work. I agree with that. <laughs> like, that's, like, at least in saying it at least sounds pretty legit. But the, just coming out with the beard, I thought that's where you were going to go with it. And uh, then uh, goes to a station for the first time um, since we've been seeing the Enterprise Bridge. It's just emotionally cathartic to see somebody coming out without a beard. <laughs> and Spock, the top right hand corner, he's covering his mouth. For me, that was just uh, emotionally cathartic and kind of brought the whole season um, uh, down to that one moment. and because somebody didn't have a beard. Man, I'm missing so much without the context of Discovery. I'm never gonna watch it because they're politically active, like they're specifically activists with the ists. Let me say that again. There we go. We inserted us back into uh, the timeline that we know and love from uh, Star Trek. I don't think it is the star, the, the time, it, it's a different timeline because I think you have some details incorrect from what I understand from the show. What are those specific things? I have no idea. Just heard it from, it's hearsay from other people. Yeah. <laughs> but if it is the same timeline, being politically active, you are fucking up the series. But if it's your own timeline, fine, fantastic. It's just something that it's never canon or whatever. That was pretty awesome. And the sound. The sound. The, the sound of him shaving. <laughs> the scene before that is just him like going, shh, oh, not, not, not even like a clean shaved razor. It's literally the bzzz. <laughs> it's just the, the, the electric razor. Oh, no, 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 no. They're so high tech. They're so uh, regressive that they actually use beavers. And they have like a beaver and it's just like you pull the tail and it goes, da, 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 da. just like the Flintstones. And he's like chopping off the entire beard. And when he uh, looks into the mirror, everything's like kind of bloodied and bruised and scraped and everything. He's like, mmm, perfect. He, he grabs his alcohol and is rubbing alcohol. And he goes, ah, like Home Alone. <laughs> and he, ah. <laughs> oh. And <laughs> the thing. Yes, the sign of the thing. The that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the woo 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 woo. Let's hear that again. The thing. Yes, the sign of the thing. The woo 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 woo. The woo 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 The woo 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 woo. Oh, that's funny. Um, and well, I kept a... Ethan's beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, whose beard? I thought it was Spock's beard. I painted it a little bit, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I tried, it didn't work. Um, uh, Sonequa, so this takes us into... To something else. To a question for you. Uh, as Burnham uh, leaps ahead into the future at the end of season two... Okay. Um, what would you say is her hope, not just for Starfleet, but for herself? Moving. Okay, my guess, be, I'm just going to go with what's consistent from the show so far, is that she's talking about something... <gasps> she's going to bring up something... Political. Forward. Oh my goodness. Um, well, first, I mean, you know, a salvation of, of, of sort. What do you mean by salvation? That sounds very religious. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, okay, here's my guess. That she's going to say something about the salvation of the show, that we have something to, I don't know, that that would be a legitimate claim, that there's something for us to go towards. That there's a um, something hopeful for the future. I I, I go along with that. Of course, uh, you know we are um, we the crew of Star Trek Discovery in the finale are deciding to to sacrifice everything, everything that we have for the future, and so there's the obvious hope that that works. <laughs> Okay, I'd agree, I'd agree with that one. <laughs> that the plan works. Uh, and even logistically, that we land where we're supposed to, that we defeat control, that we save the world. And Yay! And save the universe. So there's the inherent hope of that. And then I think there's all... Again, I'd agree with that one. So a hope 
of... Okay, she's not really saying much. The unveiling, con uh, continual unveiling, unveiling, and finding the perfect sweet, sweet balance between all the forces that wage within me. <laughs> I'm a woman! <laughs> I'm a woman! Uh, okay. Well, there's not... Oh, look at that face, top left-hand corner. Oh, they actually have some weird faces. <laughs> okay. See you season two. Take your brain back. Take your brain back. This one's for you. Um, so in season two, Take Your Brain Back, uh, Saru reunited with Serana and also helped to... Free uh, push them into becoming a warp-capable society to leave... Oh, wait. Saru to leave them and push them into becoming a, a warp-capable society. Oh, how hard do you think? Um, how hard do you think it was for Saru to leave them behind? And without giving away any spoilers, do you think there's a future for more Kelpians uh, in the Federation? Uh, oh, right. I think that's the hardest thing Saru has ever had to do, and he's now had to leave his home world and his sister twice. Okay, I don't even know who this character is, what he's doing, so we're just going to skip everything. And, yeah, he's, he's talking about Star Trek stuff, which I'm kind of okay with. This is actually a post-warp society, I think, in Federation. Okay. Giorgio's been ripped away from the world that she knows, not just once, but twice. <laughs> she just keeps getting Thank away you! From her. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was the leader of the Mirror Universe, not anymore, and now she's a, a, an agent of the Section 31. Nope, now you're season okay. three into season Done. three. Into season three? I think she's really pissed off. <laughs> No, I think she, but you know, uh, Emperor Jojo, Captain Jojo, she is one that always finds her way uh, into it. Okay, this is kind of just nonsense. We'll just keep skipping. What? Their relationship moving forward. To me, one of the great things about season three is it really blends the personal slash family nature of our show and not just literal family like our couple them but also the family of the ship it, and huh? you know, it, it really explores family in wonderful new ways so okay hopefully it's not nihilistic <laughs> like that's one thing because picard picard they killed off picard they literally killed off captain picard in the show picard and uploaded his brain into a synthetic brain so I mean, I hope, uh, just, I, uh, because they could say it's about family and exploring what family means, but I think what you're going to probably push is something political, which if there's nothing political about family, family first, it's not family only, it's not family exclusively, it's family first, first take care of your family, make certain they're good, make certain that everything's running good, then you can start doing other things, you might have to go and work 8, 10, 12, 20 hours a day come home, have four hours of sleep, and then go home. And then go back to work to make certain your family is taken care of. That's the whole purpose. Family first. So if there's anything else other than that, I just don't don't really care to listen to it. Uh, season three, discovery, choice, Paul's life. I think the moment he realizes everything he needs is right here. It took a long time. What's my point? Blah, 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 blah. Ah, look at that. He's so happy. <laughs> he knows a different work, a place in the world. More equal footing, I think. I take terms of work and mental health. I love Kulbar. Kulber? I love the new Kulber. I have no idea what that is. He's a three-dimensional. He's, he's more three-dimensional in my head. Oh, man, I'm just going to read this from now on because this is so much more interesting than the actual... <sighs> Tilly's Tilly's always had an eye for her captain's chair over the past two seasons. I think so. I think that they are, in season two, sort of the zenith of leadership within Starfleet. You can see more about the journey. <laughs> We're also really edge of the unknown. To be Anson and Ethan, any of you, all of you, please dive in. In the TOS? Star Trek Discovery? Pre-TOS? What is TOS? I have no idea. Uh, with the Discovery crew impacted strange new world. Someone wrote that for me. Ah, uh, this is so... Oh. Okay, I think this is the one clip. Uh, well, I'll start by saying that Spock's interaction with Michael Burnham is essential to transforming Spock from somebody who's been born on Vulcan that is half human, that has been taught to be Vulcan. And I think Michael Burnham gives him the permission to be human. And that's the issue. 
in many Star Trek is that there was, it, he was never given the permission to be human. It's something that he was discovering. Let me do some research on this. I, I, I want to find something. Okay, I just wanted to make certain that it wasn't actually a producer, but a character on the show. Okay, so Michael Burn Michael Burn uh, Burnham is the fi is the fictional protagonist on the Star Trek Discovery, portrayed by American actress Son Sonequa Martin Green. She originally appears in the first uh, as the first officer on the USS Shenzhou Shenzhou under Fili uh, Philippa George Goya. Until she commits mutiny and is stripped of her rank. Which, actually, that kind of sounds interesting. Um, uh, but the issue here is that on the show, there is a character that gives, her the that gives him the permission to become human, which is incredibly retarded. It's something that he has... He, he, he does, he's not given permission over. He's not. He's not given permission to act human. He's discovering humanity. He's discovering what it is to be human. Specifically with Kirk and Spock, their interactions is that he's um, he's Vulcan and he's learning uh, he's learning from Kirk, uh, and, the, and and Kirk rubs on Spock and Spock rubs off on Kirk a little bit. It's kind of interesting. From again, some of the episodes I might be uh, hopefully that is correct. I've just seen a few episodes here and there from the original Star Trek, but the dynamic you're never given the permission. Again, a guy has to be given permission to become human. A, that's wrong. That's not Star Trek. That's a different timeline. That's a different universe. It's a different everything. And teaches him what it is to be human. So that is, you know, essential to the development of Spock uh, as we uh, follow along it. His emotion and logic going forward, a huge character point for me, dictate because of the interaction with Michael, Ensign, whatever kind of pretty much it's just kind of I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of done but I'm going to keep going I'm just, anything that really does like stand out because uh, between you and solid screen on two the magic of editing yep the magic the magic of editing where you probably cut down from three hours to 118 or something they probably they could have done this a little bit better or something I don't know season two finale you can see that tomorrow bye da 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 Da, 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 da. This is all I care for to have. Yeah. Again, um, the original. When I saw the original, the, the the trailer for this show, I th I actually enjoyed that. the lower decks. I really did. Our specialty is second contact. Still pretty important. We get all the paperwork signed. Okay, not that. They actually make sure we're else. spelling the name of the planet right. Get to know all the good places to eat. <gasps> God, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh no. Just... oh no, oh no, 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 no! <gasps> are you pretending to do a captain's log? <laughs> Again, I, I, I thought this was funny. I really did, because they allowed the joke to play out. I think it was kind of comical. It may not be Star Trek. It's not Star Trek, but I thought this bit was still funny. So, uh, so on and so forth. And why are you chopping off his leg? <laughs> oh, that's not. That's Rick and Morty. It's just Rick and Morty. It's not Star Trek. Like, Rick and Morty could pull it off, but if you're going to be chopping off somebody's leg, that's an extended cut of the trailer. That's... Eh. That's something that... It's not even something you do in Star Wars. That's it's, that's a comical bit that you do in... Gosh. Yeah. Again, the voice actors... I'm not going against them. It's Star Trek as a whole. That... Uh, just, uh, I'm sort of done with this. Oh, I'm so done with this. I really am. Why are you, uh, he looks old. Gosh. So on and so forth. Oh, there's so much I'm probably missing of how much bullshit they're probably talking about with politics. Wait, spoiler. I don't really care for the spoilers. I don't think I'm going to watch the show even if it comes out for free yeah I just I don't care oh yeah Patrick Stewart I remember this one ah uh, okay we'll end it off here because I, I do remember seeing something here that was just incredibly telling uh, Patrick it's what we'll end it we'll end it here uh, with one particular quote I just have to find it which might just be appropriate for the times <laughs> that we're living in as well. again he's so old 
He can't. They can't do more than one season with this guy. He's too old to keep going for the position that they want him to be in. If you really wanted to respect Picard, have him as somebody who's training the up and coming black female captain. Cap- black female captain. If you want to go with it, with some intersectionality, identity, whatever, have her fail three times comes and learns from him and then she goes off and becomes epic and amazing but is loving and respecting for the tutor for the the mentorship of the captain who taught her and that could be amazing but no they they fucked up that entire series for me however it was a case of uh i'm sorry what's your name uh you you are who and you're playing what because we had a, a first half uh, of the first so season, interesting the people now. that I was with. half of the season to learn their names. <laughs> well, oh yeah. I, I, if you uh, this one part, you get to see that. Uh, I think I saw this entire, uh, almost this entire thing. I look. She on the bottom right hand corner is so much of a bitch. Their first names. <laughs> I still don't know most of them. Their that second thing. names. I know, but we <laughs> we 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 allow for that because you're very old. <laughs> Oh, man, that's just, uh... Oh. ...you do before, what attracted you to doing... SPS, Sir Patrick Stewart. It's so retarded. And they go on and on talking about, oh, it's Sir Patrick Stewart. Oh, yeah, let's be so happy about Sir Patrick Stewart. And so on and so forth, but... I'm getting tired, I've done, I've done this too much. Uh, let's, what's the quote? What's the thing? What's the thing we should be getting into? Sutra. Karma Sutra. Your first name is Karma. Ka- Wait, is it Kama? Or, I think it's Kama Sutra to the script that's right there characters and creating that backstory within a backstory so to speak that's a testament to the script that's right there and the um you know my amazing scene partner um i like the rest of us you know first meeting um like, oh kashaw say Wait. all this to say okay they're all piss. they're all uh, he's not a god guys <laughs> and all the people out there who you know think of of uh, patrick stewart in this sort of iconic um, <laughs> um world which we all pl- place him in the truth is, he's one of the honor to work with. Generous, human. Okay, okay, I was trying to find it. I'm sorry for the editing of just letting this play, but... Okay, uh, that they tell that... Uh, let me let me find the quote. Okay, so I found this little clip, this little quote and I, from Trevor Noah. I don't like Trevor Noah, but he actually has a pretty good quote. If you're a pro-black, if you're pro-black lives matter, you're assumed to be anti-police. And if you're pro-police, then you surely hate black people. It seems that if you're, it's either pro-cop or anti-black, or pro-black and anti-cop, when in reality you can be pro-cop and pro-black, which is what we should all be. Let me say that again. Uh, or l- let me reiterate. Uh, or a challenge this for a second. Why do I have to be pro-black? Okay, pro-cop is a particular activity, okay? Particular, um, regardless of you being either black or white, a uh, woman or a man, of being a police officer, you go out there and you do a job. Being a black person has nothing to do with being pro-black. Let's just use the exact same phrase, pro-cop and pro-white. Why would I be pro-white? That's retarded. That's why I disagree with the Black Lives Matter movement. If we just replace the words with something similar, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, I, you have to love lettuce. Why do I have to love lettuce? Let's let us le- love lettuce. <laughs> Again, pro-cop and pro-black, that's like saying pro-cop and pro-white. Pro, Again, pro-white is retarded. So in essence, pro-black actually is very retarded. <laughs> So in this clip with uh, TV di- TVGuide.com, uh, Stewart was giving an interview with, oh, well, you're speaking very much, uh, well, um, Stewart saying, well, uh, you're speaking very much of a time that we are living through. My wife and I have spent lunch time today talking about joining some of the protests that are happening in Los Angeles because I am passionately behind the spirit of the protests of the mistreatment, abuse, and antisocial behavior of the violence that is extended to African Americans, and I want to be out there. Okay. Um, okay, that, hmm, what, let's change the activities that's happening, because when we start talking about the African Americans, and again, using African Americans rather than just saying black Americans, we are not, again, there's 90%, everybody's from Africa, period, everybody's from Africa, the the black people who are here that have, let's just say, African heritage more so than most people, okay, they, they are not from Africa, <laughs> it's so, it's just, it's so weird. It really is. If he's, 
that it's one of the reasons why I disagree with the entire thing. It really is. Stewart is a proponent of the protests that are happening, the spirit of it, and the, there's riots that are happening. It's like the spirit of the uh, of it is to be have civil dis disobedience. Yes, to be a little bit skeptical of the government in which we are applying the application, the government we are applying. So if there is a civil disobedience to try to get rid of the police officers, which is kind of a common thing within Black Lives Matter, it's more commonly to uh, accept that. It's more commonly to accept that police are just ultimately good. Uh, if you are pro-American, so on and so forth. There's Amer there. I, I've had almost every single interaction I've ever had, except for one city. Fuck Lake Jackson in Texas. Fuck Lake Jackson. Fuck Lake Jackson. I got arrested for not showing my ID on a college campus at a birthday party. Yeah, fuck Lake Jackson. But, again, there's... Every, almost every other single time that I've ever interacted with a police officer, if I just accepted what it what, again, because I was being disobedient, I was saying, no, I don't want to give you my information because I was being very defiant that day. I felt like, oh, yeah, this is the time. I'm going to stand up to the police. Got arrested. Had to spend the night in jail. That was horrible for me because, A, I have, I've had some habits where if it's like I need some stimulation, I need I need a computer, I need a phone. It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm fighting through an addiction right now. <laughs> it's like uh, this is the first time I've ever been in, uh, been on my own. Oh, my gosh. Ah! <laughs> so it was, it was shit. Um, but, again, it's the political activism of the show. And it's like I'm not going to be pro-black. I'm not pro-Black Lives Matter because if we just use the exact same words, I'm pro-Asian. What does that have anything to do with anything? Again, that's fucking racist. That's like, it's like say, if, if somebody coming out and saying like, I'm pro-white, pro-white businesses. What? <laughs> like, what does that have anything to do with giving me a product and service that I enjoy? Wow. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, oh man. Place him in. The truth is I've had the yeah. honor to work with. Hard law. And it, it, that light is really the space cowboy. Okay, we're gonna mute this. Uh, shut up, guys. Shut up, guy. <laughs> uh, where's that word? She's been a charming, attractive lady for her entire life, and it's absolutely amazing. He grew up. <laughs> Look at that face. He's so old. <laughs> Oh, but there's a quote in here that we'll end off on. She's just full full of it. Yeah. Loudmouth. Um, they all make fun of him. He's a space cowboy. They all go back to being space cowboys. But specifically the woman with the curly hair, she says something about the show. Where is it? Let's find it. You know, it'd probably be even better to just pause it and go through that. But the world was changed. And that's what excited me. And again, it's nihilism of the show. It's 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 amazing to see that it's, life is so precious and amazing that we killed off the main character, and that shows us how amazing life is, so on and so forth. But again, what they did was kind of shitty. Uh, so on and so forth. Let's do it this one. I think this. Nope. Nope. Oh, we still have so much bullshit talking about. Stop talking. Question for Jerry. Oh my and God. Uh. My goal or universe, I guess, into the real world. Oh, it's this question. This is the one question I was trying to find. Fleet boy. Wow. Oh, wow. What is the Star one Trek. thing that you wish could be brought out of the Star Trek world or universe, I guess, into the real world? Let me repeat that question. What do you wish you could bring out of the Star Trek universe and bring into the real world? Oh, my gosh. God, uh, acceptance. Acceptance. <laughs> Oh, do you accept Trump people? I'm not a Trump supporter. I probably will vote for him because fuck, fuck SJWs, really. Um, and he ain't that bad of a person. Um, still, hor he, he's someone with whom I would never hang out with, nor allow any of my family to hang out with. But I think he truly cares. I think he truly cares about America. Yeah. I disagree with how he approaches things. Still much better than every single other person who goes against him. Truly. Every single person. Uh, inclusion? <laughs> inclusion? Uh, inclusion? Uh, are you sure about that? Um, yeah. that the, uh, literally what Patrick just said, you know, that the understanding of how valuable life is. Mm -hmm. Like, can we all look out for our brothers and sisters? Can we all... Just 
I'm actually going to ask that same question to you. Are you looking out for your brothers and sisters, or are you specifically loving people because of particular skin colors? Which, again, it's one of the reasons why I hate Black Lives Matter, and I'll say it over and over. I hate Black Lives Matter just as much as there was a White Lives Matter. Yeah, it's like blue lives matter i agree with because they're being shot at they're being persecuted no it's not a job people want to do anymore why would you want to be in a be in a job people it's a highly stressful situation you get paid almost nearly none you have unions that might not back you up you have you have political bullshit that might not even support you if you are caught up in a very specific legal case that wasn't your fault but because of you being a police officer they're being a citizen you're in the wrong or legal again it's one of those of like like why would you want to become a police officer nowadays why the stigma of being a police officer there's many people not wanting to become that and there's many need for we need police officers just take the moment to understand that our differences are actually our strengths exactly. and it, what, it's what makes us um a strong species species yeah what well, what yeah what makes us a strong species is Wait, what makes us a strong species? For our brothers and sisters, can we all just take the moment to understand that our differences are actually our strengths? Okay, if the differences are what makes our strength, how many people on your show are, have voted or will vote for Trump? How many people? Because strength is in from diversity. Diversity is our strength. How many people on your show are proud, out and out and proud Trump supporters? Not gay, not trans, not a woman, not a person of color black people, whatever, specifically a Trump supporter, specifically a conservative, specifically saying that taxes are theft. Is anybody out there actually willing to say that? Every single person here is a celebrity, is somebody who is rich, well-off, wealthy, famous, attached to a hijacked show with its name recognition. Y'all are all wealthy individuals. Y'all are the elites in the country. In your where's your where's your representation? Where's your representation of poor people on the show? Yeah, poor people. That's actually a good question that I have, and that's that's not even just a knock because I don't know what the answer is. That's just a, a, a sincere question that I have for them. Is that where is their representation of proud and out and proud Trump supporters, conservatives, libertarians who think that who call out SJW bullshit? Where is that diversity? Exactly. And it, what, it's what makes us um, a strong species. That Diversity is not strength. Diversity is great only once we have common values. Common values are the first thing. The one thing is that if you disagree with their Black Lives Matter political activism, therefore you're on the wrong side in their worldview, which means that you need to accept what they believe in because they believe that they themselves are right, calling you wrong. You need to change. Fuck this. That we have all these different thoughts, these different looks, these different opinions, these different ways of, of, of... Difference of opinion is not good. Just for the sake of difference of opinion. It really isn't. Common values matter most. An ultimate goal that we're going towards. Hey guys, let's get... A, a, a captain of a ship says that we need to get out of this black hole. We need to uh, drop shields, This is, divert energy, put it all into the engine so we could warp out of here. And then somebody says, like, I have a difference of opinion. Shut up. We need to get this done. It's like, ah, it makes me feel bad. It's like, no, 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 no. The common thing right now that we need to all believe in is to getting the hell out of this horrible, shitty situation. If you're going against that, you're wrong because there are certain things that are objectively morally good. And what is morally good about Black Lives Matter? Well, we're helping specifically black people. That's the issue. Why not just somebody has an issue? What is the issue? If you want to move past race, you have to stop talking about it. Because the more that you talk about it, it's like people who have hashtag melanin is good. Hashtag help black businesses. Black businesses because they are black? Why? Why? It's like support local goods because economically that's important. But at the same time, if what they're practicing is bad, why do I have to be supporting it? That's the whole point. It's like, it's good to support local businesses, but if they're not in a place where they're going to be expanding, why am I giving money to a business that's going to be going out of business in like a month because they can't hold their expenses? Isn't it like, again, it sounds great. It sounds amazing. Go out and help people. But 
that's just sort of my position. It's like anything that's political, let's apply the exact same standard elsewhere. That's the entire that's that's the entire reason as to why I'm against SJWs. They don't apply the same standard elsewhere. Leftism is a virus because they make everybody weak, they break you down, they and they spread, infect, and multiply. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I disagree. That's wrong. That's wrong. Again, one great example for this. I will say it, it has nothing to do with who you are as a person. Sexuality. Gay being good is wrong because there's nothing good about being gay. There's nothing good about being straight. There's nothing prideful about being gay. There's nothing prideful about being straight. Gay pride? What about straight pride? Why would one need to be prideful about having something that's inherent? That's retarded. Pride in something that you create, pride in something that is amazing about it. But if it's amazing because you have it, okay, well then, straight pride. Like, I'm prideful for being straight. And it's like, that just sounds so retarded. It really does. There's no re- again, you shouldn't have shame, but unless you're doing a bad action. If you're doing a bad action, have some shame. Yeah, be vulnerable. Be like, you know what, guys? I was doing the wrong thing because of my actions, and I'm prideful that I'm changing my actions, not because I have an inherent. It's just, ah, oh, man. It's like I, I'm probably wrong on some things. I'm probably wrong on a lot of things, but if you apply the same place elsewhere, I don't think it's, being politically active on a show openly like this is good it helps everybody because we get to know where you are but of handling ourselves in the world of walking down the street i'm 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 so thankful that i'm part of an organization that gets it we oh did you hear that let's hear that again i'm 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 so thankful that i'm part of an organization that gets it do you get that gets it gets it you know how much emphasis, like, everyone else is wrong, everyone else does not get it. Oh, she is so insufferable. <laughs> we always talk about Star Trek holding a mirror up to society. Perhaps society needs to look at us. Woo! <laughs> society needs to look at us. Oh, I got nothing for that. Go fuck yourself, show. Society needs to look at us. Really? Really? Your diversity? You have a lot of... It's like... Oh my gosh. Oh, oh I want to bitch slap these people. <laughs> I want to so bitch slap her. I want to like hold her underwater. Not kill her, just like hold her underwater a little bit. Just enough where there's like one or two bubbles coming out. And then pull her out of the water and be like, okay. And then like do CPR and get the water out of her lungs and stuff. And when she's all okay, I'm going to like stand her up. Be like, you good? Okay. And just like slap her in the face and be like, stop it. No. No, what you're doing. Shut up. Shut your fucking ass up. <laughs> Shut your fucking oh, stupid ass up. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Bless your heart for being a part of this all the way to the bitter end. Thank you very much for uh, doing all the stuff that you do every single day, whatever it is that you do out there. Hopefully you're doing good stuff. That's what I'm going to go with that assumption. Every single person out there is riding a unicorn and flying into the distance with a rainbow trail right behind you with rainbow farts. <laughs> oh, okay. Please post your comments, questions, and concerns right down below. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button because that would greatly help this channel out. Smash that like button. And most importantly, the most important thing that you could do for the entire rest of the day, regardless of liking that channel of mine, which again, I would very much appreciate that, is go out there and do wonders. Thank you very much for being a part of this, and I'll see you next time.